Shave and a haircut. My cat. Perfect. What did you do, man? <laughs> you guessed it. It is 547. <laughs> I'm Danny Bonadici. This is Casey OK. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Cold. How are you? Are you cold? It's in here or outside? outside? Are you cold in here? No. But You're just lying. lying. Your first words. <laughs> People are out there paying good money to listen to the show. I oh, no, they're lying. not. Never mind. That's free, man. You're still getting charged too much. <laughs> I had to use my seat warmer this morning. Didn't you? Yeah, and then she went back to bed. Thank you. I'll be here all morning. How are you, how are you there, Paul? Uh, I'm great, thank you. You good? Yeah, not cold at all. How's the weather over in your part of the studio? <laughs> nice. okay. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. Are you I'm in really shorts again? Shorts? Yeah. I'm going to buy you some whole pants one day. You know, I own some. I'm just really a fighting, <laughs> fighting the, having to put them back on. Fighting the good fight. Wait, Nobody yeah, likes to wear pants. I don't pants. know. What are you, 36? Uh, yeah, 30. No, 30. I'm 38, 38 years old. I don't know why that was so difficult. <laughs> you know what? I never know how old I, I am. Would, I would hassle you if there was good little comedy in it, but that happens all the time. The wrong date, the 29. wrong this, on this, the, um, the 29, yeah. whatever it is. 38 years uh, old. 38 Final years answer. old. Dangerously close to a middle aged man, my friend. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> uh, uh, 40. You're middle aged, right? Yeah, I think so. Because technically, you're middle aged now. You're not, what are you going to live past 76? You don't look like it. No, I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, you're going to die. <laughs> Maybe oh my God. I wasn't planning on making it this far. <laughs> Me too. Uh, so, are we talking about anything, or should I get to my cat story? Uh, go to your cat story. <laughs> right. So, uh, here's the thing. Where with, am with, I? With, with, my, with my cat, who I love, even though she's mean and bad. Uh, she got less mean and bad, but my cat, 70% less mean and bad, is still a mean and bad cat. She's yeah. a mean, bad cat. Um, and not because of how you treat her. She was like, no, that when we you got rest her? her. She's way better. She's way okay. better. Uh, you know, for the first month, she lived under the bed. Now she lives in the bed mm. on Amy's show. She looks like a parrot, a furry parrot, first <laughs> thing in the morning. So, but she has these, they're not hairballs. I just don't know what other way to describe them. Uh, but they're, they kind of look like eight to 10 dreads beginning. There's these knots of hair, yet I still don't think that's technically a hairball. Right, hairballs kind of what they spit it's up. It's still mats. attached to her. These, yeah, she's no, matted. these are like what? She's matted. They're mats. matted. They're okay, mats. she's uh, um, matted in eight to ten plays easily, and they feel like wads of gum got in her hair. Ooh. Remember when you were a kid and you'd get gum in your hair, and mom yeah. cut your hair out and or tried peanut butter and then cut the peanut butter <laughs> hair out. Yep. So I decided they seem to be causing her some kind of pain. Like I pet her. I spend my day with that freaking cat, and I would pet her. And when I'd get down to the bumps or the mats, uh, she would recoil, like, you know, a lot. So I got some scissors out the other day, and they're so hard that the amount of pressure I would have to apply would cut a big chunk of her skin out if I missed even a little bit. You know, there's not like, oh, she's going to squeal and I'll snow to stop. Like, they're so hard, I'm pushing like this. That gets a piece of my cat. She's going to be mad, and she's already mad. Yeah. So then I thought, I got to get rid of these things. They're bugging me. Oh, and by the way, I'd like to point out that Amy was protesting at the top of her lungs through most of this. <laughs> that you took scissors to the cat? Well, she didn't get, she wasn't as mad about the scissors or upset about the scissors as uh, 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 what comes next. And then I remember, I can't get them. I cannot get these knots out of my cat. And I, she hates them, and I love my kitty Manitty. So I remember, hey, didn't I just shave my head? <laughs> yeah. Don't I have clippers that will shave a head around here? I'm going to... Uh, get these things out. So, you know what? I will cut to the chase on this. I have a half-bald cat and an angry wife. Oh, but I think I, I think my, my cat digs me. I'm on your side on this one. Are you really? All I right, am. cool. Do, 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 I wondered if you'd done this. My, no, my cats don't need it, but my neighbor's cat, uh, Vanessa's little kitty cat, uh, is long-haired. No, stop. The cat's not sexy. <laughs> Vanessa's sexy. Ooh, that kitty cat. No, bad. Stop. So the, she has a long-haired cat and long hairs are more susceptible to getting mats, and every year at the beginning of the summer, that cat gets a shave. Where? The entire body except the head. I knew that was happening when I said it that way. <laughs> I meant where does she get it done? Like a, a pet, pet store? She does it, she does it right? So clippers. I'm not that out of line with no. shaving my cat. It just sounds so weird. Poor Mike really you do about it? Ask me what I did last night. What did you do last night? Shaved my cat. Yeah, What'd you do? Of yeah, you it did. sounds a little bit. It's not like greased up my pony. I don't know what you did. But yeah. I've never heard of that grooming a cat. They groom themselves. Really? No, I think the grooming is what caused this in some way. I can't. What else can it be?
Most of the time, it's because they they have so much hair they can't groom it properly. She's about medium length hair, I think. Or is it a weight issue? Because sometimes the cat will get too big that it can't properly groom itself. It's no, fat. no, it's fat and stupid. That was going to be the name, but then I found out that was the morning show in Denver. No, that's um, what he's saying, though. If, it, if, if it's too fat, fat, it can't groom itself. Right. I, I, yeah. Yes, and it, it's really super fat, but not Aww. too fat to groom itself. Mm. Yeah, I, I, my vet told me she lost three pounds, which isn't. What like, doesn't sound like a lot? Like I could lose three pounds in an afternoon if I had to. Cat, <laughs> it's a lot for a cat. It, it's a lot for a cat. <laughs> like you see, fighters. The you know the two fighters I I watched on Saturday night. Yeah, Canelo. Both Triple gained B. an average of seventeen pounds between the weigh-in on Friday and the fight on Saturday. Wow. <laughs> they both weighed in at like one fifty, and they both fought at one sixty-seven. <laughs> wow. I so, bet your cat lost weight after you shaved it. My my cat. I think my cat's pleased. Uh, I had to do something that was kind of uh, weird this morning yesterday too. My TV's giving me problems in the guest room where the treadmill is. And so yesterday and then today, much bigger, more vigorous, I went up and essentially danced. Like I just did the twist with hand weights for an hour. Yeah. And the difference is, though, uh, when I go to get ready for work and get dressed and all that kind of stuff, if I don't have time to shower, the big thing to do is cool down. I'm covered in sweat. I am not covered in sweat after doing the twist. Mm-hmm. So guess what I did? And what'd you do? I bought one of those twisty boards you see on infomercials. Really? Yeah, I swear to God, I did. Oh, did you get yeah. it Fred Meyer? The one where old, they don't, no, they had them stacked to the rafters at Bed Bath & Beyond six months ago or whatever when I was there and I first started hearing about them and I even said out loud, that's an overpurchase. <laughs> They're not going to need that many <laughs> twisty boards. So it'll be delivered to my house, hopefully uh, by, by Friday, because I liked it. I, and I had some, you know, I was aware of the muscles in my back sure. and stuff, and I haven't yeah. been a, a aware of that in a long time. So I got, I got the twisty and the twisty mat, so you won't, you won't screw up your floors. And are you playing music when you're up there no. dancing? With the, you're just up there in the silence. I tried it this morning, and no, not silence. I tried <laughs> it this morning, twisty into music, yeah. uh, and it was great, and it makes sense, and I even went a little bit faster. But I can't not watch the news. I fell asleep before the end of the game, so I don't know what happened there. And ah, I got to watch the <laughs> local news. So uh, I'm going to try and combine them and do some music and uh, um, do some music and watching TV and twisting and hand weights all at the same time while possibly shaving a cat. <laughs> <laughs>
a well, big bag of powder is illegal. All right, it makes I no, I get it makes it makes sense. I, I I well I guess that it makes sense. Good enough sense for me, but it seems seems super weird killing your customers. Yeah, and I'd make it look like a Tylenol or some, right. something. Right. You know? <laughs> Well, they are facing huge charges. They say conspiracy and possession of fentanyl with intent to distribute is punishable by a mandatory minimum of 10 years in prison yeah. and up to life. And if you're a felon in possession of a firearm, up to 10 years in pres- prison. So they are going to be going away for quite a while. Good. We'll need them. Nope. I thought the gold, they're gold coins, you say? Uh, they said cash, gold coins, and firearms. Super, like these guys are all over the place. They got fentanyl that looks like something else. It'll still kill you. Their guns will kill you. And the gun, the gold won't kill you. But it's weird these guys have doubloons or whatever. Yeah, their money manager must have told them to diversify. <laughs> diversify Put right. some money in guns, some, some money, money in fentanyl. fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody this morning talking about the big news about the Highway 99 yeah. closure, the viaduct. We were waiting for the, them, the powers that be, to tell us when this month or next month they're going to be closing it, because that was the plan. They have now said, we don't really want to interfere with all the holidays, so it will close January 11th. Yeah, so there's some wacky, and I only heard this this morning, so I, I, they said it on the news and it was gone. But isn't there a mandate in this uh, city against working on holidays, street work on holidays? Well, every city has a mandate. If it's city workers, you do get a specific amount of time off, which would mean then there'd be a closure. And during half of the closure, you couldn't work because it's holidays. It's a government holiday. Right. So what they've decided to do, too much interference with the holidays. They said what they'll do is move it to January 11th. So does this just mean they're not ready to open the tunnel and they're trying to make an excuse for it? Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to mess up your Christmas, a.k.a. we didn't finish. You know, we dug. But we didn't finish everything else we need to uh, do. I got to tell you that uh, it's all happening faster than I would have bet money. Yeah. If you had to said, what what year do you believe this is going to open? I just said 2020. I just have to be a steel pipe. Yeah. Brought that whole thing down. This is never opening. That's when. Well, it was supposed to be September. And then they said, no, probably October. And then they said, well, we're not going to push for a late October date in case there's a big rainstorm. Well, maybe the tunnel can't handle rain. <laughs> We're in trouble. Well, it is so underground. Scary. I yeah. don't know how you know. <laughs> it's the New Orleans of uh, highway projects. Oh. They said if rainstorms hit, paving for the tunnel entrances might be then pushed to November. And since that's going to be off schedule, then it would go into December. Let's just wait till January. So everybody's lives will be completely upended starting January 11th, and they are still saying start your planning now because it's going to be hell. Aren't they saying? So I thought you said they were going to open it in January. It's That's closing what they're work. in January. Jeez, uh, closing, closing down for three January. weeks. And I think January it'll be 11th. yeah. I think it'll be three weeks of closure before they open before, the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, well, some good news when it comes to. Airport expansion. All right. Payne Field is expanding its footprint. The number of daily anticipated flights will be increasing from 12 to 24. And to accommodate more people flying out of Payne Field, they are agreeing to more parking. You know, for people who live north, this is fantastic news because getting to SeaTac is not easy. How far is it? It's about 30 five. minute drive looking at it right now with no traffic. But- oh. Don't I have a 30-minute drive to SeaTac? Yeah, about yeah, the same. About the same for me. That's awesome because I, you know, I'm not really just a creature of habit as much as I don't understand alternatives. There's LAX for me and there's Burbank, and that is that. But uh, we flew into Long Beach recently and took an alternative like, uh, I don't know if we took um, John Wayne or Bob Hope or whatever it was, but it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it's also a half hour from where you want to be. Such a less hassle. I'm going to start flying out of pain if I can. Yeah, it's going to be a lot a lot fewer options for you as far as where you can travel. I don't go that many places. Yeah. But this is more for people who live up north. So if you say you live in Everett, getting to SeaTac is far, especially if it, if there's traffic. Yeah. You live in Everett, going to Payne Field is super easy. Right, but then back to what Paul said, you're not really going many places. Yeah. You know, if you have a hub that it, that you do and you're a business guy, but if you're a, uh, you know, a vacation traveler, that's probably not the airport for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing they're going to do a lot of Portland trips, a lot of Spokane yeah. trips. Yep. Makes sense. You know, for some people who live uh, North Sound, they go to Bellingham, and same thing, Bellingham doesn't do a ton of flights. You could fly to Hawaii out of Bellingham. I didn't even know there was a Bellingham Airport. Yeah. 
Florida remnant, or sorry, Florence remnants are now spawning tornadoes and strong thunderstorms in the Virginia area. You know, area? this question isn't for you because God's <laughs> not high on your Me? list. But do you ever think that God or something is fighting back? The world seems to be, you know, just way, way more hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis. It just seems, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's like God's version of the Me Too movement. Like, all right, I'm offended all I'm going to take, and now I'm going to do this. Because it just seems like a wild wrath of destruction. I think the fact that we've got something called hurricane season doesn't um, correlate with, with what your theory is. That we have hurricane season right. every single year, we get hurricanes of some magnitude. But it does seem yeah. like they're getting stronger. Yeah, like nature Maybe. doesn't love what we've been doing to her for a long right. time. Right, that was that was exactly what I was asking. Is, na- is nature pissed? I called it God. Yeah. Right. No, so either way, but seems like something Somebody's is seeking mad revenge. At us. Yeah. yeah. Well, their concern now is flooding. The storm has really passed through the Carolinas, but the. Uh, Death toll is now at 32, and Cape Fear River is expected to crest today at 62 feet, which is much higher. Not according to Anderson Cooper. 900 feet. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Paul. (laughs) A body has been recovered from the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Not a lot of information was found, except that somebody had gone missing about a month ago from a rafting trip. Now, this person was found downstream of Phantom Ranch. And they've recovered the body and are now trying to figure out who it is and if it is this missing rafter. Wow. Scary. Big report. The Phantom Ranch does seem like where they go on Scooby (laughs) episode of Scooby Doo. (laughs) (laughs) That guy wouldn't have drowned if it weren't for you rotten kids. I would have got away with it too if it weren't for you pesky kids. Reports from Bloomberg (laughs) yesterday indicated that Coca Cola was looking to get into the cannabis business. Yeah, I heard that. Heard everybody that. heard this and was like, wow. Yeah, Coca- Paul, everybody heard this. Coca-Cola. <laughs> this was huge yeah, news yesterday. Yeah, I know. Everybody heard it, even Paul, and he doesn't listen. <laughs> Cannabis-based <laughs> beverages for Coca-Cola. However, Coca-Cola says shenanigans. Shenanigans? Quote, we have no interest in marijuana or cannabis. Along with many others in the beverage industry, we are closely watching the growth of non-psychoactive CBD as an ingredient in functional wellness beverages around the world. This space is evolving quickly, but no decisions have been made at this time. I hate the way that guy talks. <laughs> you know, you know. First of all, it's not true. There's not a person on earth who can say, I have no interest in uh, the marijuana or cannabis. Like, yeah, you got some interest. You gotta, you Whether you're going to do it or right. not, you got some interest. I have no interest in space travel. Well, I guess I do, actually. I'm curious how it works. Sure. But saying, you know, oh, uh, no, that's totally false. We're not going to put pot in our Coca-Cola Except we are looking at putting CBD in our right. Coca-Cola. Not, not, you won't get high. Right, no THC. Which, by but... the way, you used to get high on Coca-Cola. How are they not used to this? Yeah. Wasn't there a time when it was all full of cocaine? Hence the name? That's what I thought. Oh, yeah. Well, you thought correctly. <laughs> SpaceX announced last night who the first person going to the moon would be on the private trip. It will be Yasuka Mazawa, who is a billionaire one of the richest people in Japan. Now, we knew Tesla was going to make this announcement. They held a big press conference yesterday at their headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'm married to a super nerd who actually listened to the entire thing online last night during the Seahawks game. Because he thought it was going to be him. He thought they were going to announce his name. And it's Matt. (laughs) Yeah, I had to ask him in all seriousness, would you do this? And he said, I would not be, as much as he wants to go to space, he said, I would not want to be the first person because this may not go Oh, God. If I'm going, I'm the first person. If I'm not the first person, why would I even bother to do that? (laughs) Mr. Tetro Watanabe or whatever his name is, the second he goes, I don't care anymore. If what's-his-face calls me up and says, hey, imagine a really good South African accident right here. (laughs) Hey, Bonducci, uh, you want to go to space? The first guy, you know, this thing blows up a lot. Want to go? Yes, I want to go, and I will cash the checks when I get back as first guy. You know, I'm Neil Armstrong now, except for a drunk South African who smokes a lot of pot. I'm a hero. (laughs) Well, it is going to cost him a pretty penny. We don't have the price tag yet. But we know already Virgin Galactic has gotten orders from people like Leonardo DiCaprio, and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't like it. It's not a rocket. It's a really fancy airplane. Yeah, that one doesn't go as far. This one, SpaceX's, is going to go into actual outer space. Yeah. And this, they are expecting, will happen about 2023 because the technology's not there yet. 
But this dude essentially will get into a some sort of device that will ship him around. Like, there's no pilots. This is all computers. He's going to sit in there by himself and go around the moon. Is he going to go by himself? Yeah. They're there's sure? no pilots. They're not, they're not sending anyone with him? Uh-uh. Wow, I didn't know that. It's all computers. I thought I thought I even heard of somebody going with him. But I again, I get he all can my bring uh, someone if he wants to. Like as he has a, a plus passenger. one. Well, you can't bring someone if it's not pr- <laughs> if it's not built for another person. Every it's ounce, not- you can't bring Neil Armstrong or whoever it was that did the the golf on the moon had to disguise the golf cart, broke it down to three parts, and made it a functioning tool because they'd notice that weight. Oh yeah. You're if you're building it for another guy, another guy's going. It's not built yet. Okay, if they're building it for another guy, <laughs> another guy is going. So if this guy, who is a billionaire, says, yeah, I'm going to bring uh, Becky. Becky's coming with me. Then they'll build it for two people. Then does he have to pay twice the hundreds of millions he paid? Yeah. Do you know any of this? Of course. <laughs> As I said, my husband watched the entire press conference. So we he says he, will, he might bring someone, but oh. the big announcement was that it's him. This 42-year-old guy worth $3 billion, and he said this billion. launch, yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of, of Uber Rich guys, rich, yeah. It's not a ton. I mean, I'd take it. <laughs> I'm not so who else down. is he bringing? He didn't, didn't disclose. His wife's not going to like it if he takes Becky. Yeah, no, he'll It's not going to go yeah, over well at his house. I heard he was bringing an artist of some kind. I could be wrong on that. And a lot of people talking about a driving lesson in Maryland that has gone terribly wrong. A driver and a passenger in their 50s or 60s, one of them learning to drive, probably mistook the two pedals and went through a fence into a swimming pool. Neat. Unless somebody's dead. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody is dead. They were able to extract themselves from the vehicle. By the time rescuers arrived, they were okay. But the community swimming pool... Not okay because there's a car in there. Hey, Paul, do yeah. you have a vision of what happened here in your head? Yeah, I kind of do. What kind of car? Oh, it's uh, it's like, well, I want to say Do you have the like real a... one? No, oh, I don't. okay. Because I've totally got the Griswold Station. I just want to know sometimes, like, oh, man, am I crazy? <laughs> Quick, don't talk. But all right, on this one, I'm not. But if if you're in your 50s or, or 60s and learning how to drive for the first time, something's already gone terribly wrong, I think. It's uh, strange. I, I want you to be from another country if you're 60 and haven't learned to drive. A country without cars? Although, there's... the. There are people, yeah, a sure. country with way less drivers. Or I know a lot of people from New York City that don't know how to drive. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> when I lived in New York, I went huge stretches without driving. I mean, years yeah. and years and years without driving. And then you'd get in the car and be like, how, how does this work? I lived there two years, but I never had a car. I had a motorcycle, which I kept driving drunk in Times Square, which was that bad. I'd like to make that clear. And then I, you'd, the, if I had to leave the island, somebody would send a car to go get me. Well, we were talking about Hurricane Florence and how much devastation was left behind. We talked a little bit about the pig farm waste that is actually causing issues. The rivers of poop. Rivers of poop. No, pig which you all decide is one of Moses' least popular <laughs> plagues. And also should be the name of uh, uh, the new name of our band. <laughs> oh, rivers, rivers of, poop. of poop. Oh, great name for a band. Well, many are now sharing video of another problem, an island that nobody wanted, an island that nobody asked for, an island that nobody would want to visit. Is it in the stream? It's not islands in the stream. (laughs) It's a new version of that. Islands of fire ants. Well, that sounds like a terrible place to vacation. I'd rather go to a visa. (laughs) I don't want to go there. Islands of fire ants. They are able to do something called rafting, They emerge from the soil. They weave together to form a surface area tight enough to float. They said it can look like a little bit of a hill or even a floor mat. And it's mounds of fire ants, islands of fire ants floating through the floodwaters. Wow, that's crazy and not good for anybody. (laughs) You'd think the water would put out the fire of the fire. Like, doesn't it kill the fire? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't I know exactly how it works, I, but water, I, I see what you're going for, but no, I don't, I don't see it working that way. But can a swarm of fire ants kill a guy? Probably, yeah. Yeah, that'd be bad, so like, don't swim towards that yeah. for safety. I was bit by a fire ant of Florida, of course. Uh, it hurts to high heaven, like actually painful and leaves behind blisters. And most of the time you don't know that they have gotten on you until they bite you and then you're covered in welts and it's really gross. Wow. You have had a rough life. <laughs> no toys and fire ants. 
Well, that was their toys. Uh, here, <laughs> here's sweetheart. <laughs> Daddy got you a bowl of fire ants. One thing I've never been able to understand is the people who have ant farms. Yeah. And I remember growing up seeing some people who had them and not understanding why would you want an ant farm? I, I hate to admit it. I think they're fascinating. Now, I only remember them from being a very small kid. Mm -hmm. So maybe I remember, but they, those crazy tunnels. Yeah, they were digging through the sand. I thought they were super neat. But all you can think about, like, first you'd go, neat. And then you'd go, what if I break that? Yeah, yeah oh, exactly. Yeah, they're they're going to be so upset. Tori, you've got a lot of weird, morbid stuff in your house. Do you have a fire ant farm? I don't, but I want one now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep that in your freezer, I don't think. No, you want to just... know something random and funny? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So I was walking around, and I'm like, why is my purse so heavy? And then I look inside, and I forgot that I put my uh, hedgehog um, urn in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was carrying that around all day yesterday. <laughs> You know, most people mean when they're carrying around their dead that hedgehog, animal, right they mean spiritually, yes. not actually physically in their bag. It's time for today's Things Are Not Right in Florida Story of the Day. Yay! <laughs> well, it's not just fire ants in Florida. Many small towns throughout our nation take high school sports very seriously. In fact, one of the best TV shows ever, Friday Night Lights, all about football in high school. But in Florida, one coach took it way too far randall owens assistant football coach physical education teacher at palaka high school is accused of headbutting a 16 year old player on the team i hate this expression but i think i can say it snot rockets yeah sure doing those to the in the on kids who were playing on his team. <laughs> on Snot rocketing kids. on children? Yep. Wow, this guy on has amazing kids. aim. I'm just guessing he's Well, that's why his team's so damn good. If I could do this with Snot, <laughs> what, imagine what you could do with a ball, son. Uh. And then he would go into the locker room and watch the boys as they went number two and yell at them while they were going number two to try to <laughs> toughen them up. This is possibly the world's greatest coach. Yeah. And I wanted to coach my kids. What's the team's record? Are they are they at least yeah. winning? Because if, if, if they're, they're winning, winning, I'm with this guy. This is great. He has been relieved of his duties. <laughs> at one point, Did anybody yell at him while he was being relieved? <laughs> at one point, this dude was dean of the school. And then they found out about the headbutting, the snot rockets, and the weird bathroom activity. He has now been let go. How long do you go without hearing about that? Because some guy's yelling at me while I go number two. I'm probably telling somebody, oh, I don't know, right after yeah. I flush. Yeah. That's craziness. Oh, Florida. Oh, Florida. Oh, Florida. News this morning brought to you by Quinault Beach Resort and Casino. We have got music news coming up. What KZOK artist just did something spectacular, something he hasn't done since 1982, we will tell you. <laughs> you won't believe what hard rocker is coming out with a line of inspirational greeting cards. That's adorable. In entertainment, the Emmys were last night. We've got the highlights and, of course, wild action and Mariners tickets could be yours next in sports. Paul McCartney's latest album, Egypt Station, number one on the Billboard 200. Good. I'm super glad. Uh, this marks his first chart topper since 1982. What was that, Venus and Mars? Tug of War. Tug of War was a chart topper? Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, this album was re just released, and... It surpassed expectations, moving 153,000 equivalent album units, which means streaming, downloads, traditional album sales. And uh, they said most of them were actually traditional album sales. So this is yeah, his... Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, that's what I'm buying now. And certainly my wife is. Uh, so this is his, let's see, eighth number one album, but his first to debut at the top. Now, ever? Ever. Wow. That's Paul McCartney by himself. Right, yeah. Along with Wings. So both of those are counting towards this. Uh, the Beatles still own the record for the most number ones on the Billboard 200 with 19. Well, I think if Wings counts, then they all count, and then he's at a gazillion. Isn't it Paul McCartney and Wings? Not originally, no. Just Wings? Yeah. And he called it the band. They, he talked, they only interviewed him about his band. He was very insistent on that. And Poison singer Brett Michaels has a new lifestyle collection, which debuts today at brettmichaels.com. This is a first-ever 
Brett Michaels candle, inspirational cards. <laughs> it doesn't cards. smell like Brett Michaels, does it? It smells <laughs> like Team Spirit. No, no, that's another one. And let's see, guitars, holiday cards, and pro- portions of the proceeds will go to charity foundations. No, it's weird. Brett does not need any money, so he must care about candles and greeting cards. You must think it's a neat thing. Because I got to tell you, if I didn't need money, I'd do anything, you know, that I that wasn't completely immoral. And mostly I'd do that too and just not tell you. <laughs> but for money, if I needed money. But if I didn't need money, I'm not getting in the candle business. It is weird. odd. And he's got like 20 million bucks last time I checked and I check. Yeah, he does seem to have diversified. You know, you think you're the dude from Poison. Like, what else you got going on? I have candles. I have inspirational cards. (laughs) (laughs) He talks like that now. Is that right? That's right. Hey, coming up at 720 this morning, we are giving you a chance to win tickets to a very cool concert. Vets Aid 2018 at the Tacoma Dome with Joe Walsh, Don Henley, James Taylor, and many more. 720, you can win those tickets from KZOK. Cool. The Emmys were last night. They were hosted by Michael Che and Colin Jost. And, of course, they, like most awards shows, were very topical. Were they any good? Because they're the big, they, people talk about them like they're great, and I've never seen them do anything. Oh, I like those guys a lot. They're the Weekend, they're weekend update, update guys right? from SNL. Uh, this, this, the Emmys was a little strange because it felt like one big SNL uh, kind of uh, episode because they had the entire cast on, like everybody who was coming out. Basically, every other presenter was somebody from SNL. Right, right. So they used a lot of their people. It was I thought it was decent. It wasn't the best, but I thought it was pretty good. Well, here they are talking about the Emmy's low ratings. We just want to say a quick hello to the thousands of you here in the audience tonight and to the hundreds watching at home. <laughs> Hi, Silver Lining Senior Center. <laughs> okay. That's the hard part is that because, you know, the, the Emmys are on a network and it's it's a, a older aging audience and fewer people watching, but most of the awards are for... Netflix shows right. and HBO shows and, and stuff um, like that. I watched the news this morning and I had not heard of one show. I don't think I'd heard of one show that they mentioned. I've heard of some shows on, on Netflix and things like that. You know, they, you, you can't avoid them. Yeah. But the things that either won or presented, whatever it is, I didn't hear of one thing. It's a new world, my friend. Michael Che and Colin Jost did talk about Netflix and all the nominations. Netflix, of course, has the most nominations tonight. That's right. And if you're a network executive, that's the scariest thing you can possibly hear. <laughs> Except maybe Sir Ronan Farrow is on line one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <Took me> a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Betty White was honored for her more than 80 years on television. She was adorable while accepting. It's incredible that you can stay in a career this long and still have people put up with you. <laughs> oh, poor baby, she's getting old. I wish they did that at home. <laughs> <laughs> she's still very funny. She looked great, but she... you could tell, I mean, just from her speech, from her ability to speak, that it was Some people old. that were really old and you went, wow, look at them go 10 years ago, are still going and they don't, they look like it's been 10 years later. So you look <laughs> at some of these people and just go, oh, well, you should stop. Yeah. And someone took a knee on stage during his acceptance speech, but not how you'd think. Here's Glenn Weiss. Jan, you are the sunshine in my life. And mom was right, don't ever let go of your sunshine. You wonder why I don't like to call you my girlfriend? Because I want to call you my wife. People have been eating it up. It was adorable. Do you see him, uh, are they people I care about stopping the Emmys? Who are they? He won. And yeah, during but who his is acceptance he? speech, uh, I don't remember which so one he won th- for. That reaction proves I don't care about that guy stopping the Emmys. And he didn't get down on his knees, I don't think. How'd you hear him? There's a microphone only in the standing position. It was position. later. They, he brought her up onto the stage, and then he did eventually get down on one knee. Uh, he produced the Oscars last year. That's what he won the award oh. for. Well, he won for Directing Best Variety Special. It's the Oscar. I don't know the names of any of TV directors. Yeah, me, me, me neither. So much like, hey, you're getting the Academy Award for best, uh, uh, I don't know, of wardrobe. Okay, you shouldn't get the award on television. <laughs> they should mail it to you. Yeah. 
Game of Thrones won for Outstanding Drama Series. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel won five awards, including nope. Best Comedy. Everyone says that is one of the best shows I, I'm just on telling TV. you the ones I mentioned. I said I don't never heard of them. Okay, that's one. Yeah, that one's on Amazon, and I have Amazon, and I, I haven't even seen it, but it won a bunch the of awards. The Marvelous Mrs. Know. Maplethorpe? Is it dirty? Maisel. Oh, well, that's totally different She's from a Maple comedian, Thorpe. a struggling comedian during a time where women weren't allowed to be on stage, let alone be funny. And it's What year is that? I think it's the... Like 95, 96, I think. <laughs> the chicks weren't allowed to be on stage. Okay. Thanks. I think it's the 60s. I'm not positive. I haven't watched it yet, but I've seen some trailers for it. It looks very good. Uh, that was one of the biggest winners. The Crown, the Americans, also big winners. Outstanding variety talk series went to last week tonight with John Oliver. Uh, you know what? Everybody loves that guy. Yeah. Except the people he buries. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and Outstanding Variety Sketch Series went to SNL. No surprise there. And... What, you think it was rigged because it was their, it was their Emmys? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> and Plus the award goes, goes to, to, hey, look, us. Me. Who are they going up against? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what Variety else series? Happening. I have no idea. Yeah, best sketch series, variety sketch series. Shields and Yarnell. <laughs> In Living Color, is that still on? <laughs> it's more on than Shields and Yarnell. <laughs> And Patrick Stewart is in final negotiations to join Elizabeth Banks's reboot of Charlie's Angels. This will star Kristen Stewart, Aladdin actress Naomi Scott, and a British newcomer named Ella Belinsky. Now, what's a little bit bizarre is someone else is already playing Bosley, so they believe there are going to be multiple characters named Bosley. Oh, that it's like a code name. You're your being a Bosley. Is, your guess is as good as mine. Because yeah. we are just finding out he's in talks to play Bosley, and someone's like, well, that's weird because Kristen Stewart's Bosley. So Kristen Stewart's Bosley? Yeah. So they're clearly... I thought Charlize Theron was Bosley. All right, it's all very weird now. Well, there's more than one Bosley. I thought Kristen Stewart, it would have made sense to me she's an agent. Why she's does, an angel. Yeah, why isn't Charlize Theron an angel? Don't know, but I never heard of her an angel. I only heard of her as, as Bosley, but maybe they're going to do... Many, 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 many Bosleys. Uh-huh. Oh, Elizabeth Banks is playing Bosley. Right. And she's Everybody the, is playing and Bosley. And she's the director, <laughs> if I'm no not sense. mistaken. She's Elizabeth Banks is also the director of Charlie's Angels. She is the director. And Sony is looking to release this movie September 27th of next year. Roseanne Barr has revealed some information about the upcoming Roseanne spinoff show now called The Connors. She appeared on a YouTube show and said... Her character was not written off gently. Quote, oh yeah, they killed her. They'd have her die of an opioid overdose. That was kind of, that was a common, that was a a plot line in this most recent season was that she had opiate addiction. Uh, Well, she said, I guess that um, uh, John Goodman's character is going to be all sad and mopey because his wife's dead. And now it looks like, according to Roseanne, it was the drugs. You know, when I think of uh, situation comedy, I think of sad and mopey. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the way to go help. with that. Have a big fat guy, sad and mopey. And don't tell me he's not fat anymore. Yes, he is. He's just not crazy fat. Take away the the person that the show was named after, yeah. and then make it sad and mopey. Ah, yeah, winner. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Rich Asians isn't just a hit at the box office. Kevin Kwan's novel and two follow-ups have sold 1.5 million copies this year. That ain't bad. Crazy Rich Asians, along with China Rich Girlfriend and Rich People Problems, have occupied the top three spots on the New York Times paperback fiction bestseller list. Of course, we know it's been doing gangbusters at the box office. There, uh, Let's see. In America alone, $140 million so far. For the movie? For the movie. And a box set of the three books will be coming out on October 23rd if you haven't bought it yet. Wow, I have not. Although I own the book. I read and listened to the book while walking Green Lake. It was fun. Nothing great. Not the uh, after the final two? I don't know. I've just read uh, or listened to Crazy Rich Asians. Let's take a look at sports. Sports. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Of course, we have a lot of Seahawks action to talk about in just a minute. But first, the Mariners. Rookie pinch hitting Daniel Vogelback hit his first career grand slam and the Mariners beat the Houston Astros Yay. four to one. Yay. This was the first pinch hit Grand Slam in Mariners history, and the first since Franklin Gutierrez hit one back uh, 2015 in Detroit. 
So the Mariners are on the road facing the Houston Astros tonight with a 5:10 start time on Root Sports. If you want to win tickets to an upcoming home game, we'll call us right now. We'll play in studio Mariners KZOK music trivia. We'll play you a song clip. You need to tell us the title, the artist, and the year it came out to win. Derek, play the clip. She's a killer. All right now, 800-252-1025, artist, song title, and year it came out. Monday Night Football for the Seahawks last night. Dun, oh, dun, 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 road dun, dun, dun. game against the Bears. Who made life pretty miserable for the Seattle Seahawks? Russell yeah. Wilson. Yeah, got sacked all night long. Five different Bears defenders sacked Russell Wilson in the opening 30 minutes. It was like they were asking, did you get a turn? Did yeah. you? Hey, come on through, buddy. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> who's who gets him next? <laughs> Khalil Mack was a beast, as was expected. Yeah. He was credited with the forced fumble that Seattle did ultimately recover. But they blitzed Russell Wilson five times in the first half and pressured him on 37% of his dropbacks. I can't tell, and maybe you guys can can help me. Or uh, Will Softy be back with us at some point? Friday. Yeah, we'll see him on Friday. I'll ask him. Is it that they're not covering Russell Wilson? Now, I get that they're not to to uh, the point that we would like, but is it also that, that Russell won't let go of the ball? So, I mean, the offensive line is not giving the protection. The receivers are not, you know, getting open. And so it's just, you know, Russ fe- doesn't have anybody to throw the ball to and doesn't have enough time to throw it to him. So, but then he's uh, uh, the biggest scrambler in the NFL. Yeah. It just seems like there's there's something seriously going wrong with the way that uh, the, this team has been. Because I'm watching, uh, and because I don't know enough to, f- about football, I actually counted. He'd get the ball and I'd go one, two, three, till he either got rid of the ball or got sacked. And I'd do it to the other team, Chicago, and I'd go, he'd get the ball, and I'd go one, two, and he's already rid of the ball. It seemed like he was getting rid of it way faster with my scientific expertise. Well, with a blitz, you don't have time to get rid of it. That's the whole purpose, is they charge you so quickly, you have no time to get rid of the ball. Isn't that their goal every single time? (laughs) To charge you before he gets rid of the ball? Yeah, it's it's just a different formation. And And they're adding an extra player, so they're taking a player out of coverage and having them rush the quarterback instead. So... The combination was pretty lethal, combined also with the fact that we are missing a whole lot of players. And one of our players only got one hand. That seems weird. Yeah, it doesn't seem fair, does it? It does not. You should be able to <laughs> take, take one of the hand hands off of the Chicago one. Bears. Absolutely. 24-17 was the final, and up next, uh, Cowboys. Why do we need softy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. We're fine. With we sports coverage the like that. Our opponents. Yes, yes. Our, our, our expert sports opinion is they should have taken a hand off one of the Chicago Bears. Only seems fair. 125 next Sunday, the Cowboys come to town. Some other football notes. The Cleveland Browns have signed rookie kicker Greg Joseph to oh. replace Zane Gonzalez. He's going to change everything, that guy. <laughs> I think Cleveland's winning this Sunday. You do? I do. You know what? I won't bet against you because I'm betting that they will win. Why not this Sunday? Not going to happen. You don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing the Jets. Yeah, Paul, they're playing yeah. the Jets. Right? Isn't that this weekend's oh, game? They got to play somebody every they got they got to lose to somebody every single week. <laughs> <laughs> so this dude is from South Africa. He played at Florida Atlantic and Zane Gonzalez missed four attempts this past week. So we kind of figured the dude was losing his job as well as he should have. I feel yeah, bad saying totally that. Totally should. So we got a him. South African kicker. Yeah. That's interesting. Last night was the Australian kicker who did that uh, drop kick, which was absolutely bonkers to watch. Yeah. Never why? see that. You never see it. You okay, kick I, off I, I don't even know why. The only kick I kind of know, like I could do, would be what they consider a drop kick. Why don't they do it? Are you? So you're thinking of a punt when we're punting? Thinking, no. I'm okay. thinking of a drop kick. If I had a kick for distance, I would do what they consider a drop kick. So this was a, a kickoff, which typically is done off a tee, but instead he dropped it and kicked it. No rules against that? No. Nope. Wow, neat. It's pretty hard. I, the- I saw it and just didn't understand that it was that interesting. I, I mean, you can risk a Charlie Brown moment. Like, the if it's on the tee, it stays there. If you drop it and it hits the ground, it bounces up, and then you kick it, it has every possibility of going to the right, going to the left, and then you miss and land on your butt. Okay, two things. The Charlie Brown moment is that bitch moves the ball. <laughs> yes, That's does. not anything. And two, with a drop, you drop it and it hits the ground? Yep. Oh, I had no idea. I thought you dropped it onto your foot. It hits the ground, bounces up, and you kick it. That's why it's never done. I think it's happened once. Unless in- you're some weird Australian kicker, dude. Right. Or Doug Flutie. 
I think it's happened once in the NFL. It's too crazy. And then, well, and it didn't work. So. It didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't recover the onside mm-hmm. kick. Yeah, you were. Uh, I would think because all these years, I thought you. you I was going to demonstrate. Uh, you take the ball and you drop it from your hands, and on its way down, you kick it. That's what I always thought was a drop kick. When it hit the ground, it seems crazy. crazy. And the Minnesota Vikings cut ties with their kicker, Daniel Carlson. He went 0 for 3 on field goals against Green Bay. So they have replaced him with veteran kicker. Dan it is a rough Bailey. season for kicking yeah. already. Yeah. And in a surprise move, the Cleveland Browns have traded the talented but troubled wide receiver Josh Gordon to the New England Patriots. Bit of a controversial player. Because and- he's never eligible to play. That, that. <laughs> I think he did six seasons with the Browns, and his rookie season was the only time he was eligible to play the whole year. He's missed a couple of seasons, Crazy. like entire seasons from suspension. He missed an entire season and scored exactly as much as any other Brown. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> but all drug violations, uh, mostly marijuana. And you know when you get, at least early on, once once he's a multiple violator, then they can do random testing. But early on, you know when you're going to get tested. They say, right. uh, this year we're going to do it in April. So just maybe be good for April, wow, and, and then yeah. you're fine the rest no, of the season. Whatever the month before April is, go, yeah. go with that. Right. But not with pot. With pot, you're in big trouble. With others, you, you can, uh, and I can help you if you need to. Uh, I can get cocaine and heroin and meth out of your system. For, you do it on Friday, you'll be clean by Monday. But you'll be sweaty and uncomfortable and peeing a lot. <laughs> if only that was his problem, marijuana. Well, he will go to the Patriots, and the Browns will get a 2019 fifth-round pick. He... Uh, I think should be active this weekend. <laughs> yeah, he missed uh, he missed three weeks of of like training camp and preseason because he was in rehab, but uh, he's he's home from that. <laughs> so. happen. And he's not currently not suspended. All so. right. And the Sounders have a match against Philadelphia Union tomorrow at eight p.m. And the Mariners on the road facing the Houston Astros tonight, five ten start time on Route Sports. We are giving you tickets to an upcoming game playing in studio Mariners music trivia. Derek, play the song clip again, please. Terry and Tacoma knew the answer. Queen, Killer Queen, 1975. Terry is going to the Jeep winner's window in our lobby to pick up tickets to what, Derek? Tickets for the game on Friday, September 28th at 7, 10 p.m. versus the Texas Rangers, which just happens to be Fan Appreciation Night. Fan Appreciation appreciation Night. night. That song seemed like it came out the other day. I was in the 10th grade when that came out. (laughs) The Mariners celebrate the best fans in baseball at Fan Appreciation Night. All fans take home a team poster, plus there will be prizes, surprises, and more throughout the night. Then you don't want to miss the final fireworks night of the season. The Mariners have partnered with Pyro Spectaculars, the same company who produces the New Year's Eve at the Space Needle Extravaganza. Visit Mariners.com slash fireworks for more information. Thank you, and congratulations to Terry and Tacoma. The rest of you will have another chance to win tomorrow morning right around this same time. Sports this morning brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys at 1-800-DUI-AWAY. You know, we were just talking this morning about how bad that can be. You get a DUI, you need a lawyer, you need one fast, you need one that's good. Call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. They'll fight hard for you, and they'll meet you free of charge in Seattle, Everett, or Tacoma. So if the unfortunate happens to you and you get a DUI, don't delay. Call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. That's 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Well, let's run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. 7.20 this morning, our very first patriotic contest. It's called We Salute You, and you can win a pair of tickets to Vets Aid 2018 with, oh, I don't know, Joe Walsh, Don Henley, even James Taylor, and many, many more at the Tacoma Dome. Last night we had Monday Night Football, a tough game for the Seahawks, who will turn it around this Sunday when the Cowboys come to town. But this weekend in general in football was really crazy. Just a lot of kickers blowing games. We had another tie. And then there was the Buffalo Bills player who decided at halftime he didn't want to play anymore and just quit. Yeah. Super weird. Super. They, said he might not, they said he might not even get part of his $5, $5 million for signing for doing that stunt. Probably not. Yeah, I would hope that they would take that away. Yeah, me yeah. too. You know, I get a lot of players quit. A lot of players say my health is more important. A lot of players say I'm not going to return 
Never have I heard of it happening in the middle of a game. Right. You, I, I mean, we could do this all day long because nobody's going to understand why he didn't just go out and sit on the bench, tell the coach, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hurt. Uh, exactly. I can't play. And he, the coach would say, fine. But he just blew a gasket and said, I'm, I'm done and walked away. And you do hear periodically about people who decide they're done and quit their gigs in a crazy way. Yeah. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. You know, sometimes you decide you've had enough and you go out in some epic form and other times it's it's bad and you leave in the middle of a game ruining it for your fans and friends. I'll, I'll tell you, I was working at Black Angus Steakhouse and it wasn't because I minded the work. I didn't understand it. I was the assistant manager and that's a big business. And you're yeah. supposed to do stuff besides seat people and tell waitresses what their shifts are and tell busboys what, you know, where their shift is. There was bookkeeping to do and I always got it wrong and there was always corporate stuff and I couldn't get it right. But my wife at the time, and that was several wives ago, would not take that. You know, you work for men work for living. That was her whole vibe. So what I did was I somebody was supposed to change the light bulb in our our handyman or whatever had a, a, a fear of heights so i said i will do it and i planned this out for the next day i went in and i said i'm gonna fall and i'm gonna hit the bar and i'm gonna have an injury and then i'm gonna fake workers comp and i thought nobody's gonna believe me i'm a rough and tumble kind of character yeah i better so what i did is i, I palmed a razor blade i climbed up the ladder and I cut my eyebrow, and I wait till I could feel it dripping down my face, and then I fell, fell. And they saw the blood, and they went, "Oh my God, call an ambulance!" And I got paid for the next six months. But oh it's, a, it's a coward's way out. But I didn't know what to do. That's great. It was a long. It was like a long walk to get that done, too. Well, how about you guys listening? Let's hear your story. Have you or someone you known ever quit in a wild way? It was good. It was bad. Who knows? But we want to hear your story. Call 800-252-1025 or text in nine zero six two seven. I guess you know this story. A Buffalo Bills player just quit, just retired at halftime, walked away. I faked an injury so I could continue to get paid because I was pretty broke. Have you or someone you know ever quit your job in a wild and exciting way, good or bad? Call us 1-800-252-1025 or text 90627. We'll talk to Trucker Andy in Silverdale first. Hey, hey Trucker Andy. Hey, you people. What do you mean, hey, you people? people. Uh, so after getting into a heated argument with my supervisor, uh, I, uh, you know what cardboard dunnage is? A what? Cardboard dunnage. No. It's just cardboard that goes over top of chipping material to protect it. Okay. So I took all my dunnage, threw it all over my machine everywhere, told the boss that he was a, a uh, effing a-hole and told him to F off and die. And just throwing, throwing wow. it and throwing shit everywhere. I'm out of here. Wow. Wow. That's that's a dramatic way yep. to, to quit yeah. your job, putting down all your dunnage. I'm done with this dunnage. <laughs> I put most, the dun in dunnage. Most people are too afraid to lose it on their boss because how are you getting a reference for your next job? But sometimes you your temper gets the better of you. You're talking to me. You think you're a boss? And I went, oh, no. He, Bonaducci, you oh, should hire him immediately. Sweetest guy. He, he, he's on time, and that part's right, and then it all goes downhill. <laughs> Have you or someone you know ever quit in a wild way? Let us know, 800-252-1025. What about you, Johnny in Bellevue? Hey, Johnny. Hi. Hey. Hey, this is uh, uh, Johnny Seven. We had a guy. We were up at Snoqualmie Sand and Gravel. I drive dump truck. And, uh, anyway, yeah, thank you very uh, much for that. <laughs> yeah. He was he was getting yelled at by the boss on wide band on the next tell so everybody could hear it. He just had enough. His name was Mark Ramirez. We called him Rearview Ramirez because we couldn't remember his last <laughs> name. But anyway, uh, he, uh, he was in line waiting to scale out. He just had enough. He pulled the plug and he said this because he was ahead of him. He pulled out from the uh, line of trucks, yeah. waiting to go on the scale, went down around the corner, raised his box, and he drove out, made two corners, and he had his chain set, and he spread 5 eighths crust rock for probably half a mile. I got to tell you, that is Ooh, the, because I understand the whole story yet, 
There were 27 technical terms in there. I don't even understand. <laughs> well, I was I was maxed out at Dunnage from uh, the last yeah. caller. He dumped gravel all over the road. I got That's that part. Yeah. I got that part. There was a guy recently who made news for quitting something in a really wild way. He was in a 20-year relationship. Yeah. Had kids with the same lady for 20 years. And one day left, never went home. Moved to America from England and got married to somebody else. Yeah, they thought he he had disappeared. Yeah, they, they thought he out, died, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they put out a missing persons. Nope, he just quit his uh, relationship and married someone else. That's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Rob in Louisville, have you ever known someone to quit in a wild way? Yes, I did it really good. I was a kitchen manager in a high-end restaurant, and I was no longer happy with the place. With about three hours to go, I told the cooks they could have the rest of the night off and the dishwasher the same. And once I knew they cleared this down for at least the night, right? Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I prefer oh, that yes. than when I hear somebody gets mad at their boss at a restaurant and does something bad to the food. Because I want to pretend it, that never happens. Right. Don't take it out on the customer. Yeah, right. I want to pretend. And it does. It totally happens. But I want to pretend that never happens. So I, I appreciate Rob's stories almost sure. every morning. And I appreciate that one, too. Well, and with that one, too, he did just hurt the restaurant's bottom line right. and the owners by doing it. Good morning, Stu in Bellingham. Hey, Stu. Good morning. What's up? Hey, um, I worked at a lumber reload up here in Bellingham. Um, you reloaded uh, train cars, trucks, and I had a guy that was just a really crappy foreman. He kept getting on me all the time, so one night, he had done that. I dropped the load that I was working with on the ground, turned the forklift off, got in my car, went home, and never went back. Wow. I'm so, sensing a theme of very me, angry truckers. <laughs> yeah. And, we're, and yeah, yeah, people that work with their hands, don't make them mad. That's where that guy, that guy trucked and dumped all in one story. We have another angry trucker, DJ in Puyallup, who was working in Florida, and he decided to quit. He had had enough of the owner of the truck, so... Uh, he got in that company truck and drove it to New Jersey. <laughs> wow, that's quitting. That is quitting, my friend. And uh, a garbage man, uh, one of our garbage men, uh, checked in and said, a new guy parked his truck on the side of the road and called a cab, took off and quit because it was raining. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> it was his first time working in the rain, and he just couldn't handle it. Sanitation engineer, by the way. No, they like to be no, called garbage like men. called garbage I call them sanitation engineer. They, <laughs> they get mad at me. Me too. Dude. Is that true? Because yeah. with me, I got to get them on the email. Tony and Kapowson, have you ever quit in a wild way? Not too wild, but I, when I was working for Haas Brothers Construction out of uh, Maltby, one of the other drivers told me uh, one time he left an outfit in a huff. Uh, he had a load of blacktop in his dump truck, and he took it out to the back of the parking lot where they keep their trucks and tucked it away where nobody would see it. It was hardened up as any highway before they found it. Ooh, wow. <laughs> very, and very creative, you guys. Yeah, I appreciate definitely. that. That's what we asked for, and that's what we got. Paul, have you quit or known someone who quit in a wild way? Uh, it wasn't me, but it was a coworker. You've heard of, uh, you hear them on the news every now and again. Somebody makes a cake, and it's like their resignation letter, their two yep. weeks' notice on a cake. Well, this coworker of mine did it with cupcakes, and he took him into the bo boss's office and presented his letter of resignation. And then he had timed it out, so he sent an all staff email saying, "Stop by Steve's office and grab a cupcake." That's so amazing. people just started flooding in to take take cupcakes of his two weeks' notice. You know, just fun. think about it though. If you made cupcakes, because you make a, a cake that says "I quit," you yeah. send your message right there. You make a batch of cupcakes, and on each cupcake you put a letter. Yeah, it was, the it boss was a now word has to, for yeah, a cupcake. The, <laughs> the boss has to scramble to go. What? What? What is it? Why does it say "I"? Very cute. clever. It was pretty fun. Yeah. I like it a lot. I like Plus, it. we got delicious cupcakes. There so. you go. I used to in Chicago, and I wrote about this in my book. And my my ex boss got mad at me, but I told you we used to drink on air. It was a different time. And sometimes by the time I'd get home, I'd be all oh, drunk and stupid. And I would call my boss, Larry Wirt. And he's the first guy's name I ever had tattooed on me. And I would say, you son of a bitch. You, you, you don't care about me and treat me right. I quit. I'll never come back there. And I'd wake up and I'd go, oh, man, did I quit my job? And I'd have answering messages saying I quit my job. And I'd have to beg that guy, please. Oh. And then he did not give me a good reference. Oh. <laughs> Hey, thanks for all the calls and texts. It is now time to play We Salute You. We, we salute, salute you. You can win a pair of tickets to Vets Aid 2018, which is Joe Walsh, Don Henley, James Taylor, and many more. Veterans Day, November 11th. This is at the Tacoma Dome, and if you want to play this game and win the tickets, call right now, 800-252-1025.
where we are playing a brand new game called We Salute You for your chance to win a pair of tickets to Vets Aid 2018 at the Tacoma Dome. Now, this is a concert that raises money to fund grants to veteran services organizations, and it features Joe Walsh, Don Henley, James Taylor, and more. To win your tickets, correctly identify the musician with a military background that we are saluting in Danny's Clue. Fred in Tacoma is our contestant. Hey, oh, you kids in your crazy game. No, it's a crazy <laughs> game, and you're going to win it. I can I can feel it. You're going to get those tickets. You're going to go see some big stars, and it's all going to go for a good cause. Are you, do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Oh, yes, sir, I do. Right. Do you understand the rules of the game? Yes, sir, I do. All right, listen carefully, my friend. We salute this vet, one of my people, born Anthony Dominic Benedetto, but known better by his stage name. He was drafted and fought as a U.S. Army infantryman in the final stages of World War II. He is the last of the old school crooners, and he left his heart in San Francisco in 1962. More recently, he's done duets with Lady Gaga and Ms. Piggy. Can you name this vet who we salute? Oh, and we do salute him. That would be Tony. The money was on you, Fred. Nice job. You've won a pair of tickets to Vets A 2018 at the Tacoma Dome. Fred is going to the Jeep Winners window in our lobby to pick up his tickets. The rest of you join us tomorrow at 720 for another exciting round of We Salute You. And don't leave us because the big news of the day is next. All right, here it is. It's the big news of the day, and it's brought to you, as always, by our very good friends at Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE or go online at GoldbergJones.com. Well, there is a new study out from Johns Hopkins about the eating habits of Americans, and it looks like Americans are cutting back on meat consumption. Hmm. Not real Americans. <laughs> that was an well, audible gasp It, it really was. Paul. You guessed. Why? I just, I don't like it. You don't like it, do you? I, I, you want Americans to be vegetarians? I, I, no. You got to pick. No. You can either be but American or vegetarian. I eat pasta <laughs> as often as I can, and but uh, I still watch my carbs. You can cut back on meat. Just be still, you know, conscious of your colon. I don't I'm know. conscious of your colon. As a butcher, I'm against it. Right, of course you are. So two-thirds of people have been eating less meat, especially red and processed meats, over the past three years. What's the processed meat? Is that like hamburger? Hot dog. Oh, right, right, okay. Yeah, even like lunch meat. God, those are yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Considered processed. Now, we know higher consumption of red and processed meats is associated with heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and some cancers. Uh, many people cutting back on meat for health reasons. Many cutting back to save money. Mm. Yeah, expensive. meat is expensive. Uh, we, of course, know that bacon is part of this and that's yeah because it's so delicious it's so Process. delicious Often. if i heard uh uh for sure you're definitely gonna have a stroke if you keep eating bacon eventually mm. i would say holy oh, <laughs> <laughs> now americans we have the fifth highest meat consumption in the world i'm shocked that we're not number one kind of number one in everything we're america australia oh they have like five guys <laughs> <laughs> what do they have 50 million people? We have 50 million people in California. But well, it's got to be per capita, right? Per capita. No, oh, they still suck. Where's uh, Argentina? Don't they just on, they only eat meat, yep. right? Yeah, no uh, vegetables, no sides. Even no beverages. <laughs> just, just meat. Yes. They, <laughs> they squeeze steaks until they get enough meat. juice. <laughs> and a new study from Wallet Hub. These guys do it all the time, come out with various lists. And this one they've got is what U.S. city is is deemed as the place to have the most fun. Where is the most fun? What uh, U.S. city? Oh, 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 oh Tampa. It's got to be Vegas, baby. Oh, Vegas, yeah. Baby. I didn't even think, I'm thinking a good clean right? fun. You're thinking strippers and drugs. Oh, yeah. Fun, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Real fun. I apologize. <laughs> Vegas. Where else do people have fun? Well, they take into consideration other factors than just, you know, strippers and alcohol. New Restaurants. York City? Paul doesn't. <laughs> movie theaters, festivals, playgrounds. Like Disney World. You could actually have fun. Well, yeah. Danny, you are sort of right. That's, That's Orlando, it. right? Orlando. That's what I meant. Tampa. They keep, it, they keep Tampa in Orlando <laughs> now. <Saint Pete. laughs> Same thing. Orlando is where Disney is. Right. Thank you. And New York City at number three. You guys Miami? are doing pretty well. People having fun in Miami? 
Number five. Oh, look at Paul, you go. you're killing it. Yeah. Chicago. Wow. That's no, number really? six. I was gonna, no, you're now you're just messing I with me. I am not messing with I you. I thought too cold to have fun. Well, you don't have fun all year long, or you go inside. <laughs> and there's lots of good bars on Division Street open year round. Paul, cool. you've been on a roll. Give me another one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> T- Toledo. You just well, did. Right. I think I was just done. <laughs> all right, the most fun. Oh, cities. Los Angeles, Malibu, yeah. your mom's house. None of these. Oh. Phoenix, Arizona. You, you, I almost swore at you. Oh, yeah, what, oh what about Kansas? Kansas City, the if city you have to. Kansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kansas City, Kansas is on that yeah, top Kansas 10 Kansas City, Kansas. So top 10 cities for fun. Vegas, Orlando, New York, Atlanta, Miami, Chicago, Portland, Oregon. Bakersfield. Really? Portland. San Fran, New Orleans, San Diego. Oh, no, how do we forget about New Orleans? I mean, All you're right. puking, but you're having fun. I, see, I did not have fun in New Orleans. Not no. even during the part where I was sober enough to understand what was happening. <laughs> I did not have fun. I have $100 for any of you, either of you. I won't sleep with you. Who can tell me what city <laughs> right. is at the bottom of the list in the fun ranking? Uh, Cleveland. Camden, New Jersey. Those are all good guesses, and I keep my $100. Pearl City, Hawaii. Is the least fun? Least fun. Huh. Oh, oh, if you're an American soldier, because they have a harbor there. <laughs> Pearl yeah. Harbor, right? Yeah. And that's why it's not fun, because you're morning? Oxnard, California. That's not fun. Bridge, it can be fun. I've had fun there. Bridgeport, Connecticut, Santa Rosa, California. Fornia. No, Santa Rosa's fun. And Fontana. Fontana's not fun. <laughs> so, again, this is nightlife, restaurants, movie theaters, festivals, playgrounds. Vegas, baby. Big announcement from Heinz yesterday. Yeah. Mayo Chup will finally make its official U.S. debut. What is this it? month? Mayo Chup is. Oh, like ketchup. Mayo Chup. Yeah. yeah. So Mayo, Chup is a thing. It's mayonnaise and ketchup right, mixed together. It. Really? We voted for it. <laughs> I, I'm still voting <laughs> for it. I just didn't know that Chup us. was an actual verb or, or noun. Ketchup, Mayo Chup. <laughs> it's yeah, not. No, they I, just mixed the two words that's together. That's what I thought. It's not a real word. Don't scare me. <laughs> Heinz is giving one lucky city a chance to try it first. How lazy are we that we can't mix our own mayonnaise and ketchup? Hey, did you ever see the mix the peanut butter and jelly yes. in the same jar? <laughs> yeah. how, how many so knives gross. are we going to make dirty before we invent that? So if you go to their website or you go to Twitter, twitter.com slash Heinz Ketchup US, you can vote for Seattle or Tacoma or Olympia to get mayo chup first, but people are actually losing their minds about this. Yeah, not only don't care, but I'm a little bit offended. But you can't Just send it yourself. when you send her, whatever you're going to do. Don't, <laughs> Seattle does not compete with Jersey or Cleveland. We're Seattle. We're the home of Bill Gates and everybody else. So shut up with your mayo chup. Does anybody remember when they did green ketchup? No. A long time ago, if, if I'm right, if it was Heinz. And then when that kind of went okay, they actually colored their ch- ketchup. There was blue and green. I could be making a lot of that up because I was really high that year. But there was definitely. <laughs> you I, were the I, only one who saw the colors. Hey, Derek, <laughs> do you remember uh, different colored ketchup? I actually do remember it. I'm trying to find pictures of it, and I can't find it. Ah, as I, long as you remember it, that's good enough I, for me. He was I do high remember. He right. was high that year, too. <laughs> He's 12. He doesn't get high. Mayo Chup will be going to all cities, however. Later this month. The web address that you gave out was so long, I easily could have mixed ketchup and mayonnaise together on my <laughs> own. <laughs> By the time. At the ripe old age of 74, yeah. Gary Busey is gearing up to release his debut single. This is a two-song single that I will... can't inc- wait. Or- please, please tell me we have audio. We do not, but you probably... But here's the thing you forget, man. He, when he played Buddy Holly, yeah. he played guitar and sang. Yeah. It was That's great. Right. Did not he win the Academy away. Award for that? I don't know, but he he's not have. in that kind he of mental not. state anymore. He... But let's remember, he bonked his head and he's crazy. Yeah. He just, I'm not you know, blaming him. No, I know, but there are people who are a wreck because they took a bunch of drugs, and even though I took a bunch of drugs, that's their fault and my fault. This wasn't Gary's fault. Yeah. He did win an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor in the 1978 biopic, The Buddy Holly Story. Yeah, he should have won. He will have a version of this song, Not Fade Away. There'll also be an original recording called All The Way. Pre-orders are going on now through the crowdfunding website, Pledge Music. I'm going to do it. I feel so bad for that guy. He's such a talent. Yes, but... He is a little weird. Cray, remember the I TV like show Surviving him. Gary Busey yeah. where you lived with him for a week? <laughs> oh, man. 
The uh, sports news we'll be sharing with you next is about basketball. Now, I know the Warriors did not visit the White House after winning the NBA's two championships uh, since Donald Trump became president. The WNBA's Minnesota Lynx did not attend last year. And Sue Bird says this year they will not break the trend. Sue Bird said at this point, it doesn't even really need to be discussed. It's come up. We've paid attention to what happened with Minnesota not getting invited. Everyone knew what was happening with Steph Curry and LeBron James. We've been paying attention. So we would not, experts say, they won't be invited right. because Donald Trump doesn't want well, to be told no. Who invites people that in advance say, I'll say no? <laughs> exactly. So that's, but uh, I'd, I'd still go. I don't, I don't think you have to do what all the other people in basketball. Imagine if other disc jockeys, if Stinky and Florwax said, oh, I'm not going to the White House. Go, all right, well, don't. If you invite me, I'm totally going. I'm going to steal ashtrays if they say White House in them. <laughs> Big news of the day brought to you by Goldberg Jones. Divorce for men, 1-800-DIVORCE or find them online, goldbergjones.com. Hey, coming right up. You always like this every Tuesday and Thursday. It's Sarah's Filthy Forecast. It's Sarah with your filthy forecast. What a day we had yesterday. It was so clear. You could see the soft mound of Mount Rainier. Oh, yes. <laughs> I bet you like seeing a soft mound, just lightly covered in moist, wet, fluffy bits of <laughs> snow. Know. Oh, speaking of wet and moist, you'll get licked by the sun's rays again today. 65 for the high. Will you need a silk scarf to tie things up? Will the weather be blowing? Uh, okay. <sighs> Join me next time to find out about the weather or what I do with that scarf. <laughs> with the best weather front in Seattle, I'm Sarah. All right, what are they, soft soft white mounds? What were they? Soft mounds. What do you think of a soft mounds? <laughs> Uh, I don't think I can say on the radio. Oh, see, I go immediately mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. That's the yeah. first thing I That's thought. Exactly of. what I was thinking no, about. No, you yeah. weren't. You're thinking about boobies because you're a big old <laughs> pervert. That was, that was a filthy forecast. And by the way, I'd like to tell everybody about that. Uh, we got some very cool stuff going on. We have the iHeartRadio app, which is happening. It's all your favorite music, all your favorite radio stations, and more importantly, all free. You can put us in your pocket and take uh, take us with you wherever you go. Listen on your iPhone, your laptop, over 200 other devices like Alexa, Google Home. Everything you want to do, you can listen to us. All you got to do is get the iHeartRadio app. If you ever wondered, hey, uh, those guys, they're comedy geniuses. I wonder what they're wearing. That's what okay. I think all yeah, the time. All the time. They're really funny. I wonder if they have shirts on. That's yeah. what I wonder. Well, you can find out. Go to uh, Danny TV. It's just that easy. Uh, you can watch Danny TV live on the KZOK Facebook page or catch the daily replay on your YouTube page. And the answer currently is two of us have shirts on. Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We found out this morning that Brett Michaels is launching a lifestyle collection Neat. that will contain candles, guitars, inspirational cards, holiday cards. <laughs> you know That's why he loses me? You know what? You know where I why I would buy this if I were in the market for any of this at all? It's because Brett Michaels has one of the nicest lifestyles of anyone you ever met. He has a seven thousand square foot place in Phoenix, Arizona, or Scottsdale, Arizona. They're, the property is littered with ATVs just for guests. He doesn't like to ride them. Come on, I'll party with that dude. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember this, but about five years ago, he launched a line of pet accessories. Yeah, I do it was remember. All rock stars. Yeah, now that you Very mentioned funny. it, I do remember that. Very funny. I mean, the dude just kind of keeps reinventing himself. Oh, I think he's I, like the dude from Poison with a, the hair. A cowboy hat with fake hair and a bandana for your cat. <laughs> How fun is that? <laughs> no, I like Brett Michaels more and more. <laughs> but he, I'm mean, still not buying his candle, though. Oh, I want his candle, and I want it to smell just like Brett no. Michaels. It's pretty impressive because, let's be honest, as a band, he did all he could do. He knew he had to branch out. He had to branch out and do something else. He had to reinvent himself because that glam hair rock stuff's not coming back. Not in selling records, but people still buy tickets for it.
Yeah. Remember, remember uh, Motley Crue's yeah. farewell tour? They were stadiums. Those guys still sell. Sure. I don't think Poison would get a stadium tour. No, they play No, no Kwame. They sell out. Yeah. It's a great little yeah. show for uh, 1,500 people. But he reinvented himself, and I think kudos to him. You know, Lindsay Lohan is also making that attempt just nowhere near as successful. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought you were going to throw that one. And Lindsay Lohan did it. No, she didn't. She's still a, an absolute she joke. keeps trying. Yeah, and God bless you. You should try. I tried. Sure. I tried as hard when uh, when I got to be an adult after Partridge Family. I tried to go to work as an adult actor. That totally did not work out to me. Uh, adult uh, actor, like a porn star? Yes. And then uh, seriously, no, oh. no, an adult. Oh yeah, Just, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because you were um, a child actor, right? And I was growing now up. I'm an adult actor. Uh, but the only time I was successful, I think, was after breaking Bonaduce. I had to re- rebrand myself as a decent guy, a hard working guy. Mm-hmm. Like radio stations weren't lining up to hire that guy. Yeah. I had to prove myself a little bit. Well, successful or not, who has reinvented themselves is the question. Uh, my, Brett Michaels doing it successfully. Lindsay Lohan not successfully. Danny successfully. So successful or not, who has reinvented themselves? Call us now, 800-252-1025, or text your answer into 90627. You remember Brett Michaels from Poison, <clears throat> excuse me, and also Rock of Love on VH1, where he just slept around like a big tramp and nobody cared. It's kind of cool. Well, that guy's got a new lifestyle collection, and the question for you, ladies and gentlemen, is... Who do you think, successful or not, has reinvented themselves? You should call us right now, 1-800-252-1025, or text 90627. Good morning, Farmer Ted in Seattle. Hey, Farmer Ted. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Right. What do you got for us? So I've got a couple. I've got one for good and one for bad. All right. Uh, the first one is for good. She's gone back and forth, having reinvented herself many times. Madonna. Oh, heck yeah. You see... And explain it, I'm not I'm not putting up a fight for this because the first person I thought of was Madonna. And then I went, I don't really remember why. What did she do that she's different? She's a pop star, right? And and, and, and adopts kids. No, she had a different look and a different sound on almost every album. So huh. she had like just the teeny bopper sounding pop stuff, although singing about being like a virgin. And she was wearing that white dress. And right. then all of a sudden she has, you know, 15 years later, something with a country twist. And she's playing guitar and playing a... Uh, wearing flannel shirts. Right, but her, her her only gig is still selling records, so it's just different records will do. Yeah, okay. every single record just to reinvent herself as much as you might not like her. She's No, I happen to like her a whole, a whole lot, even though she totally slept her way to the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Mark calling from Seattle, who, uh, successful or not, has reinvented themselves? Well, after Warren Sapp destroyed his knee, I'd say uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Is, is that what happened on, you know, not being that big of a wrestling, uh, you know, I don't watch every second. He got hurt, and that's why he quit? No, he's talking Warren about football Sapp injury. destroyed his knee in football. Yeah, so he got hurt. So he became a successful wrestler, and now he's a hell of a movie star. Yep, that is absolutely yeah. a viable. I, see, I, I get see, that I full thought on. Warren Sapp got in the ring so did I. and did it. So <laughs> he that's where I was him. confused. Like, so did I. That, oh, but even the and they do at, they do all the time. Singers get in the ring, comedians get in the ring. John yeah, Stewart players. got in the ring. Yeah, but when you look at him as like a wrestler, he's kind of a goofball. You know the whole "Do you smell what the rock is cooking?" You wouldn't have said yep. household name, biggest movie star in the world, would you? No, no, no. I would not have. No, that's a, the the rock is a huge successful. That's a yeah. reinvention right there. What about Brent in Port Townsend? Successful or not, who has reinvented themselves? Hey, happy boot and skirt season. Hey, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Brent. I'm and wearing them right now. If you just... watch Danny TV, <laughs> yeah. you'll even see maybe my undies. All right, now, uh, what do you got for us there, Brent? <laughs> Alex Rodriguez. What a dog. Yep. Yeah, but, oh, no, but that's the point. Do you agree then? I mean, when you call him a dog for sure, is he reinvented enough that he's no longer a dog in your eyes? Totally forgiven. Yeah, yep. I agree yeah. completely, man. It I agree, pains Brent. It me to agree with him. Not yeah, I totally I don't agree. Love Brent, but... if, and I and I buy it way more than I buy Madonna's reinvention. Because one is doing stuff differently that you've already done, and one's doing stuff that you never did before. And that'd be A Rod running around as management and not shooting up roids. And as a broadcaster he's too, broad- he's, right. been, and he's broadcaster. been fantastic on TV. That's what I hear. How about these from the text line at nine zero six two seven? Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Went from like pretty much unemployable to unemployable. Iron Man. He did the just so you know when he did I forget what movie it is, but when he did his first fairly big movie, 
he had to put up, and I don't know where he got the money, he had to pay for his own insurance because nobody would insure him. Oh, really? It was millions of dollars for insurance on a movie. Uh, Donald Trump going from a reality star to president. Wow, they're totally right, whoever sent that text. Yeah, and they said, well, we don't know if it's successful or not, but we'll have to see. <laughs> oh, and how about uh, Britney Spears? She's had a, a bit of a, a reinvention. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Yep, I mean, and it is still the same type of career, but Britney Spears went from shaving her head and smashing cars to one of the most successful runs on yeah, uh, Vegas agree. residency. I agree 1,000%. Yeah. Let's talk to our friend Blair in Lake Stevens. Hi, Blair. Hey, guys. So I, I kept changing my answers because everybody kept beating me to the punch. Right. But, uh, but, like, I wanted to see you, Danny, because you've really come a long way. And I, I, I miss uh, – well, I don't miss the old you, like, when you used to uh, talk about how you would drive naked to the coffee stand before hitting the radio station with Adam Carolla. <laughs> 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 oh, the good old days, man. Naked Those coffee. The good old days. All right, what do you but, got uh, for us, Blair? I was going to say Colin Kaepernick because he went from a, a quarterback to not allowed to be in the NFL anymore and becoming an activist. And now he's just a very controversial figure, and some people hate him, some people love him. And I'm going to see where everybody else has a stand, so well, including you. Thank you. For, you should just come work here. That was the <laughs> nicest little. And next, let's all take calls on the, the guy, Colin Kaepernick. Well, I will tell you this. I hated him with all my guts. You stand up for the national anthem, and that is that. Well... I've never been a black guy in America today. You know, I don't know what I don't know what he's so mad about. And then all of a sudden, I started to see his side of it more and more all the time. Uh, I guess if you're going to say he's an activist, he went from being an active player to an activist. That's that's a very that's a solid uh, rebirth right there. And uh, Paul, what do you think, successful or not? Who has reinvented themselves? Uh, Ice T. Yes. Who went from singing about being a cop killer, killer. to uh, being a cop on TV? Yeah. Uh, maybe on Law and Order SVU. One of the top five longest running characters in, on television. Yeah, he's been on for because he does other television shows as that character. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Law and Order SVU is going to break the Gunsmoke record as well, and he's been on it since almost the beginning. Yeah. And he used to be a terrible actor. And got better as the show went on. He's so now he's decent. like a full-on mediocre yeah. actor. Yes. Yeah, he also slept his way to the middle. <laughs> Tori, successful or not, who do you think has reinvented themselves? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, a couple yes. times, yeah. Bodybuilder to actor to politician to pig. <laughs> yeah. She's right. totally right. <laughs> That's right. All right, uh, then I'm going to take Snooki. Snooki? I think Snooki's. she was... The sleaziest drunk girl on the boardwalk. And now and she's she's, she's a mom. I read articles written by her. She can write a sentence together. So yeah, I'll def I will definitely take Snooky. <laughs> I take not Pauly D. That bastard. <laughs> oh, how there. about Jamie Fox? I remember we that yeah. for some reason in Living Color came up on the show earlier today. He started on that and was yes. like a comedic actor all through the nineties. And then he did just amazing dramatic work. And Academy Award winner. Yeah. Who would have and, saw yeah, that Living kinda... Color came up this morning somehow. You I said I think I brought it up. Yeah, yeah but I don't remember up. why. Doesn't matter. It's a nice reach around. Well, and Jennifer Lopez got her start on yeah. In Living Color. Yeah. She's a fly girl. And look at her now. Yeah. All the big okay. stars are made on In Living but Color. But just for fun. Jim Carrey. Is that a reinvention or is that the natural progression of a good career? You start as a dancer, then you do this, and then you do that. Is she reinvented herself along that way, or is that's the trajectory she always she had? She became an actress. Right. So yeah, she actress, was a dancer singer, yeah. on the show. She She's didn't a, do any acting. For the point of this uh, discussion or and or argument, I'm going to go she was an entertainer who wanted to be more. She, there's no way that she didn't want to be a movie star when she was when on she was in Living Color. They all want to be a movie star. So I don't know if she's a reinvention as much as just a really yeah, good success story. I wasn't she reinvented herself. I'm saying it, it's all about the future. hit maker of, yeah. of yeah. 1991. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a point to that. You're right, Jim Carrey. Yeah. Yeah. Derek, what do you think, successful or not, who has reinvented themselves? Jordan Peele went from a comedy sketch actor yeah. to an Academy Award-winning director, and I think his production company has like three or four huge uh, hits on the way. Nice. In production right now. That's a good one. And did, anyone, did anyone say Donald Trump? One yeah. of our callers oh, okay, did. Yeah. Okay. You know, went from being an idiot to being an idiot president of the United States. Uh, here's a great one from the, the text line at 90627. Chris Pratt, he went from being a terrible high school wrestler to the biggest movie star out there. Oh, oh can I light my cigarette up you? Because you just got burnt. <laughs> Why? I, I, I don't know. Because you wrestle him and he's a movie star. Here. Right. You're locked in here with me. Yeah, but, but in high school, he was a terrible wrestler and I whooped on him. So mm -hmm. that's all that matters. Much funnier. So uh, I'm going to go with the fridge. The, the football what? player, remember the fridge? Oh, not the from appliance. From the Super Bowl shuffle? <laughs> yeah, no, not the appliance. Yeah. Uh, but he was big as the appliance. That's why they called him that. He won a Super Bowl. He was a huge star, but he thought it was a fascinating story. And now he's a really successful 
bricklayer in Indiana. Hmm. And no somebody idea. asked him, said, uh, like, they kind of insulted him about being a bricklayer now, and he got all mad. My daddy was a bricklayer, and I'm a really good bricklayer. I kind of like that. So I'm going to go with the fridge from the Chicago Bears. Thanks for your calls and texts. We will take a very short break and be right back with the news. News is brought to you by Quinault Beach Resort and Casino. Well, the big news this morning, definitely about the Alaskan Way Viaduct. Yeah. Shortly after we say hello to the new year, Seattle will get to say goodbye to the viaduct, triggering the longest major highway closure to ever hit the Puget Sound area. Now, Paul and I agree that they should just never close it. You should also have a tunnel. Where do you stand on that? I think you close it down. I am terrified every time I drive through that thing. Because you think it's going to fall down or because yes. it's too close to building? Because do you think it's going to fall down? Yes. All right. As the rulers of the free world, two to one, you're out. Never close <laughs> right. the viaduct. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first step towards opening the new SR-99 waterfront tunnel. And this transition means 99 will be closed through Seattle for three weeks, forcing some 90,000 drivers who usually take the viaduct to find another way through the city. Is that every day, every month, or every year 90,000? Because it doesn't sound like much for the traffic I get caught in. I think it's every day. Every day, 90,000 well, a day? Yeah, okay. Weekdays, but yeah. 90, is that what you think, Paul? I think right? so, yeah. Because you, you hear these crazy numbers. We used to live in Philadelphia, and uh, a million people a year would cross, cross the Ben Franklin Bridge. Mm-hmm. Kind of a nothing bridge, but that that was your action. Well, it's certainly going to cause some major traffic headaches. There's going to be extra congestion on all the other roadways throughout the Puget Sound, local streets as well. January 11th is the official start date for the Alaskan Way Viaduct to close. A Washington State Patrol trooper got more than he bargained for when he tried to pull over a woman from Olympia for expired tabs. The trooper spotted the white hatchback Toyota Prius going southbound on I-5 through Marysville, When the trooper turned on his emergency lights, the driver made no reasonable attempt to pull over. She drove a mile before stopping at an intersection. The trooper then got on the loudspeaker and told her to get off the road. She stayed put. The trooper then approached the driver's side window and told her, get off the road. And she would not. Do you know that up until this point, she's still within her rights? Isn't that weird? She doesn't have to pull over? Mm Mm-mm. Absolutely not. She can drive straight to a police station and say, I didn't believe it was a real officer. Mm. The trooper told the driver to pull over for a third time. (laughs) She said, I will not. I drive a Prius. I am not pulling over there. (laughs) What? 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 Maybe if you do it again in her voice, it'll it'll sound more like it'll make more sense. I will not. I drive a Prius. (laughs) I'm not. Pulling over there. Was so, that his Yoda? So it sounded like his Yoda. Oh, I think she had <laughs> of the esophagus. Pull over will not I. So she refused. <laughs> the driver said, step out of the vehicle. Yeah. She said no and resisted. He then forced her out, and she was not happy and said this. I will own your bank account. <laughs> I will own your house. He said, what's your name? And she said, none of your business <laughs> what's happening <laughs> yeah that's this what this the, lady said this is the best dramatic reenactment yeah, ever <laughs> well she um said she drives a prius and she had to keep driving so her tires wouldn't pop she was arrested for investigation of failing to obey instructions failing to identify herself obstruction all misdemeanors but she's going to trial some of that's not a misdemeanor, I don't think, when you don't pull away. When you've ruined your excuse of I didn't believe it was a cop and I felt my life was in danger, because you can actually get away with that. Uh, that once you've done that, I mean, I did this just at 150 miles an hour or whatever it <laughs> yeah. was, but it, believe me, it was a felony. <laughs> well, a lot of people this morning talking about Elon Musk for good reason and for bad. Yeah. Last night, Tesla held a, or SpaceX rather, held a press conference and disclosed the first person to go on a trip around the moon is a Japanese billionaire. We also found out yesterday that Elon Musk is being sued. The driver who criticized Elon Musk's attempted contribution to the cave rescue in Thailand has filed suit against him because Elon Musk called him a pedophile. Oh, one of the rescue divers. Yes. Vern Unsworth, who helped to save the dozen boys and their coach, filed a lawsuit against him yesterday in California, 
because Elon Musk kept referring to him as the pedo guy. Pedo guy, yeah. Um, oh, is that all? Not pedophile? He didn't no. finish that word? He just called him pedo oh, guy. Oh, no, you beat that. Yeah. Well, you beat that. You know what it means? He doubled down on it and said he has a child bride. He goes to Thailand all the time. Like, he he didn't just leave it at that, Elon Musk. Why did he go after one of the divers this hard? Because the diver was uh, was saying on social media that, that uh, Elon, Elon Musk wasn't helping, that he wasn't wanted there, that they didn't want the submarine, that his design of that sub, little tiny submarine... If- wouldn't work. If there's a hardcore implication uh, that the guy's a pedophile when he is not, Elon Musk being a billionaire will fold tents right away and pay the guy to go away. You don't want to be saying that word over and over and over again in court. Yeah. Whether you're the guy accused of it or you're the guy that said it, it's a bad, bad, bad word. You just fold up and go home. We'll see what happens. As I said, this uh, lawsuit was filed yesterday. But otherwise, you could get away with saying, I thought he should go in there on his feet because that's what a pedo guy does. A pedo guy walks. Mm. Household cleaning products could cause children to become overweight by messing up their gut bacteria. How many calories are in Windex? (laughs) (laughs) Researchers have found children who live in households where disinfectants were were used at least once per week had a higher body mass index. It's those Tide Pods because they've been eating all those (laughs) Tide Pods. It says 1,700 calories each. They said if you use... Eco-friendly substances to clean your home, those kids are less likely to be overweight. They believe that households that use these disinfectants then have different gut microbiota, which is your digestive tract, which can figure out how things get processed through your body. You got your gut biota. Yes. Make you micro- fat, I will. Micro- there, see, now we're all Yoda. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm no scientist. But I wonder if households that use regular disinfectants versus households that use eco-substances aren't also feeding their kids differently. Right. That's what I would absolutely think. And you two are not a scientist, so what do we know, Danny? Of course you two aren't scientists. They're they're bad. What are you, crazy? (laughs) Come on. Everybody knows that. But there is another study for those of you who are worried about your gut health, your gut microbiota. Crickets are the answer. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. So I should just tell, like, eight out of ten of my jokes? (laughs) Perfect timing, young man. (laughs) No, crickets are healthy, high in protein, high in fiber, iron, calcium, B12, and it is good for your gut. Is that all over Asia they eat bugs? We need to start eating more bugs. You know, uh, Yo sent some bugs in here and I ate them, and I thought they were pretty good. I didn't think... You know, I guess the protein and what's good for you can't be seen and or tasted because I felt like they turned to dust the second you, you bit them. They were gone. But if they're good for me, I'll eat more of them. I know in some restaurants where they're trying to offer this, they are meatier than the ones that Yo brought you. Those were pretty small, and they did seem dry. Right. But they were cool ranch-flavored, which was awesome. <laughs> you know what I want is uh, – I'm trying to think where they – Cool Ranch, because that's what my wife, you, she won't they, eat a meal. They they were, like, seasoned. I, they, oh, mine they were, were lime. Yeah. That's why I thought uh, they were. That's right. Yeah. yeah. They were, sure and lying. they were de- they were delicious, except I choked on one. Yeah. I didn't want it, like, Yoda to think, oh, he's choking on my, my cricket. So I didn't say much, but it was horrifying. <laughs> that sounded like code. I didn't want you Yo's code. been choking on my cricket? Yes. Yeah, that does sound like a code. Maybe don't say it again. <laughs> yeah, although that's not even close to what I said, so it's a great code. But it's not that code outside. Ah! Really? Where's those crickets at? <laughs> That's what I was waiting. You think I did that by accident? <laughs> you guys are no help at all. Well, something you might want to put in your mouth. Yeah. Other than crickets. <laughs> mac and cheese candy canes. I'll put mac and cheese in my mouth anytime, day or night. That's the yummiest. But what, candy, candy canes? Stupid. It's stupid novelty crap. I've been buying Sarah this candy like we're courting because it's it's caramel corn or candy corn, candy which she likes and no real people like. I don't know why they manufacture it. It's all for, <laughs> for Sarah. And uh, then I got her the Hershey bar, and it's white chocolate, isn't it? It's white chocolate. Well, it's candy corn flavor, but it's oh, like white chocolate. I thought candy. there were just candy corns in it. No, Danny brought me a Hershey bar that said it's candy corn cream with candy bits. So it looks like white chocolate, but it's technically candy corn cream. Tastes like white chocolate to me. It's pretty delicious. All right, then. Archie McPhee, one of your favorite places here in Seattle, are selling mac and cheese flavored candy canes. And if that's not enticing enough, they have clam decanes. 
Gray Ew. and white candy canes with clammy flavor. I don't want that. Nobody wants it. I have no problem it. with clams it's or cl- candy canes. I ate clams for dinner last night. I had yeah. clam soup. It was so good. Mm. But I, I don't want it in the form of a candy right. cane. That's the grossest. You don't want to lick clams. Where's the crickets? <laughs> Come on. Man. I think that was a little too awkward for crickets. Even Derek was going <laughs> to pretend he didn't hear that. The crickets ran away. The crickets were ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> you think Derek's pretending not to listen? <laughs> hey. yeah. Mention yeah. his name. Timely. He perks right up. <laughs> there are some cats who are thieves. Cats who will go and steal socks. Uh, they'll yeah. steal underwear. Underwear. Anything they can get their hands on. Yeah. Well, pause, technically. A little, <laughs> a little bit unusual. This cat brought home something, and it wasn't undies, it wasn't a bird, it wasn't a mouse. Bag of drugs. It was a bag of drugs. Oh, God, really? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Neat. The parents woke up. Was the cat moving really quickly? Because then I can guess what kind of drugs. (laughs) They looked at the cat's bed, and he was curled up with a baggie of drugs. They have not disclosed what kind, but they suspected it's class A. I don't know what that means in England, but a class A scheduled drug. Oh, in England, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, but it, I mean, the cat brought home a bag of drugs. Somebody's probably super mad. Yeah. See, I want to make a bad joke for the, to see if I get the Should cricket sound effect, but I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm not doing it. I'm going to slip it in. You'll You've never, never been notice. afraid before. I've I've said that a million times too. <laughs> and they never do notice, do they? Uh, oh, not once. <laughs> <laughs> so are they going to arrest the cat? <laughs> Possession no, with intent to it. distribute. It has a canine. <laughs> or a canine. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Barbara, Still California. No, no crickets. Yeah. A high school junior was driving home from school when he noticed a black purse in the middle of the street. Oh, don't touch it's a bomb. Well, he's a kid. He did touch it. He's 16. He said he touched it all the time. (laughs) He figured that somebody had lost it from their vehicle and that he would take it from the roadway. It fell out of her car, dropped it or something. He opened the purse to find the owner's identification. And inside, more money than he had ever seen in his entire life. He's 16. How much money is that? $357. Close, Paul. $10,000. A fair amount of you dough. say stuff with such de- determination. I said, "Wow, three hundred fifty-seven dollars." Just my guess. Uh, well, I know now, so okay. Well, the you wanted to guess? Yeah, I did. Then I realized oh, guess, it might be out there. Guess ten grand. Twelve dollars. So the kid opens the purse, sees the ten grand, and yeah. what do you think he does? Uh, goes to the police station so he can return it. Yep. Not what you would have that done. That an idiot. It's not. I have a sixteen-year-old, although he's seventeen now. But I don't tell anybody. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping. That he would run off to, like, uh, Buenos Aires or something with that money. Well, this kid took it to the police station. They were able to find the correct owner through Facebook and return the money to her. Is the correct owner a drug dealer? Why does she have 10 grand in her purse? Usually, in these situations, it's somebody with a business, and they're on their way to make the deposit. I beg Uh, the difference. Usually, it's a drug dealer. She is not a drug dealer because she went to the police station. To get it. Santa Barbara. He got a hundred dollar reward and a handwritten thank you. Not enough. No, there, there's all. <laughs> that's not enough. Ten percent of the fine. Ten percent. Thousand yeah. bucks. You're thousand nobody. Bucks. Give the kid a helping hand or a handshake. What'd she give him with her hand? Hundred bucks and a handwritten note. A handwritten note. <laughs> Dear kid, sorry I ripped you off. Yeah, Never do right. a good deed again. Well, Paul, you like the uh, Cool Ranch Doritos? I do. Yeah, those are yummy. And bugs. Uh, put it was like put that little sprinkle stuff on bugs. But a lot of people, the obsession, flaming hot Cheetos. They're pretty ridiculous. They're pretty yummy. Are they? Are they really hot? Because yes. if, they're, if they're really hot, it seems like there's no market for them. Flaming hot Mo- Cheetos have made people's careers. Right. That's what I'm saying. That most Americans don't like flaming hot in a real sense. I am. I like hot. Amy thinks she likes hot, and then never really does. Says, "Oh no, this is too hot for me." So my question again is: Have you had them? I haven't had them. No, have I'm you not, had I don't them? like Cheetos at all. Have you I had have them? had them several times. And are they? Are, do you go? Out, do you need something to drink? Some milk or? They're not that right, bad. Right. But I they're just want to know because I like snack. the idea of them. Uh, I like any of the crunchy Cheetos, and Flamin' Hot Cheetos has become an American phenomenon, and they're selling like crazy. And now a celebrated Los Angeles chef, Roy Choi. Yeah, I like that guy. He's opening up a pop-up restaurant called the Flamin' Hot Spot. Now, we've had pop-ups for Flamin' Hot before. 
Uh, the last one was in New York, and the waiting list had thousands of people's names on it, and it was booked within two hours. This guy's doing it now in Los Angeles. It'll be open today through Thursday, and they're going to have a fiery menu with delicacies like flame and Hot Chipotle Ranch Wings, Cheetos Sweetos Hot Cakes, Chester Cheetahs Churros, and <laughs> Other flaming hot wow. deliciousness. Because he made his his bones, if you will, on Korean food, different takes on Korean food all around Los Angeles. He started with one truck and just the Korean taco thing, you know, that you hear about. He yeah. started that. Oh, wow. And he's got the biggest social uh, media presence. And he says, Here's where my truck's going to be today. And there's a line before he gets there. But this none of this sounds Korean, but it all sounds yummy. Well, there is such a demand for this stuff that Amazon Fresh is also going to have recipe ingredients. So if you wanted to make one of these flaming hot Chipotle ranch wings or the mac and cheese, for example, you can get the ingredients and the recipe through Amazon Fresh. Flaming hot Cheeto pie. That sounds good. Mm, that yeah. does sound good. And a cat knocked out power to almost 8,000 people yesterday in New Orleans. The cat got into a substation, caused the outage, and according to the spokesperson for the energy company, they do have protective devices to help keep the cats out. Sometimes they were able to make their way in anyway, and they do not survive. Right, I was going to ask, are they fried? Fried. All nine lives. Just like that. Yep, yep. All nine lives. No, nine times. Well, it really depends on what kind of life the cat lived before that. Good point. It might have got. Psh, psh. It could have went in there with yeah, just a couple of lives left. Yep, but I would think it would be more like because it's high voltage, like the cartoons, and all the hair goes up, and he turns black, and you see the skeleton. Just saying. Exactly. Like that. <laughs> Most people would choose citrus, floral, or woodsy scents when they use bath bombs or bath salts, but there is a new one up for sale on Amazon. World famous roast beef sandwich reality bath soak. Well, oh, I, I don't think I want it, although I put in salts to, to make a stew in my tub before. <laughs> well, they said this is a delicious smell. It's also something that will ease stress, eliminate toxins, and relax muscle pain, all while smelling like roast beef. Now, as a vegetarian, can you still use that? I, I couldn't mentally yeah. soak in roast beef. Even if I ate roast beef, I couldn't soak in roast yeah. beef. Oh, I could soak in roast I could roll in roast beef. As you said, you have. I, I love me some roast beef, man. <laughs> me too, but I don't know that I want to smell like uh, it all day. I, I, you'd appeal to me. I, <laughs> what do you well, smell Well, then like? I definitely yeah. know I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to gotta soak in some roast beef, Paul. All right, I know it's on Danny's Christmas list. Yeah. I'd be surprised if it's not at my house when I get there. Roast beef sandwich. Surprised and disappointed, right? All at the same moment. <laughs> We still have a lot of show yet to come, but that will do it for your news, which is brought to you by Quinault Beach Resort and Casino. Music news, entertainment, and sports all ahead. The America's Got Talent season finale just got a lot more rock and roll because Kiss will take to the stage to perform at the finale tomorrow. Okay, I'm watching totally. It's Kiss, <laughs> man. You got to watch. You're nobody. I didn't even know they were still in the competition. I mean, <laughs> it makes sense that they would win, though. Once at least they took the, the makeup final. off, I got fire them. <laughs> They're going to open the two-hour finale, which will air at 8 p.m. There are 10 finalists vying for the final prize. So tomorrow... Eight o'clock kiss. Now, I've never seen an episode of America's Got Talent, but they're not like American Idol or The Voice. There's jugglers and, mm -hmm. and little people, yeah, and little people jugglers and all that. They shoot you out of a cannon, whatever. You yes. can't juggle little people. There's got to be some sort of rule against that, There's right? no rule against it. I checked before I said it. All right. You just have to be super strong. <laughs> Mamma Mia 2 star Cher yeah. has opened up about her bizarre fling with superstar Tom Cruise. What? Yes. Now, Cher, a while back, said that Tom Cruise was one of her best lovers ever, and they are still friends today. She said the reason that they wound up bonding and eventually hooking up was they both suffered from dyslexia, and that's where they bonded. Is she a Scientologist? No. Not to my knowledge. Not. 
Now, they first met at Sean Penn and Madonna's wedding back in 1985. Tom Cruise was already a superstar, but thanks to the movie Risky Business, 22 years old. Cher, 38 years old. Oh, wow. And they met, and then they were invited to Ronald Reagan's White House with other dyslexia victims, bonded, boom, chicka, wow, wow. Okay, just real quick, as a person with dyslexia, are we called victims? Am I a victim? Uh, afflicted with it's a uh, beats victim. Disability. Victim sounds terrible, man. <laughs> victim sounds like I have to make a big confession about what my uncle did. Yeah, it's considered a disability, a learning disability. Yeah, oh no, that it is for sure. She said there are a bunch of people who were at the White House, and we became an item, and they are still friends. To I wonder this day. how many of the people ended up in the ladies' room by accident. I don't get it. No, you can't read the signs. They're, everything's upside down. I guess they, that's when they oh, had the, dyslexic, started yeah. the drawings. Yeah. And I guess you can read signs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, although I keep ending up in the ladies' room, but not because I misread it. <laughs> I just do. Chrissy Teigen has a good sense of humor and is a very good sport. Now, Chrissy, super cool. She's super cool. She's from this area. Uh, Lake Stevens, I think. Yeah, I thought it was we're all from Lake Stevens. Homish or somewhere. Guy I used Comish. to wrestle her in high school. Yes, yeah. you wish. She has a huge social media presence and was at the Emmys last night. Got kind of a bit of flack because somebody asked if she was pregnant. Like she just had a baby a couple months ago, and she looks pretty fabulous. Yeah, um, but she's always responding with something funny. Always, just to this girl. I don't know how she does it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she also says she is not a complainer, that if somebody brought her the wrong meal, she'd just eat it. She's right. not a complainer. But she did clarify something on social media. We've all been saying her name wrong. It is not Tegan. It's Tigan. Oh, I thought you meant her first name. Chrissy? Uh, yeah. Tigan. Tigan. Yeah. She said everybody has been mispronouncing her name and she just doesn't bother to correct them. Well, she does. Just it took a long time. She's lazy on top of other things. Well, and is she, is she serious or is it a joke? Because this was a thing uh, in the NFL with uh, Tyrod Taylor or Tyrod. Tyrod Taylor. We're not sure <laughs> because he they asked him in a press conference just this season. You know, he was a yeah. college star. He's been in the, right. in the league for a few seasons. And she might have done. I mean, there are people who think misleading other people is funny. And she yeah. could be one of them. So but- she might just be joking about the Tyrod Tyrod thing because they still called her. Uh, Chrissy Teigen last night right. at the Emmys, and she didn't. See I her. like the name better, Teigen. Teigen rather than yeah, Tigan or Tigon. What is it? I don't Tygon. like Tigon or whatever it is. Uh, her mom confirmed, yes, that is how to pronounce our last name. It's Tigan. Um, Tarad Taylor is one of many athletes who has said, "Y'all have been pronouncing my name wrong, and I'm just so excited to be here. I don't correct yeah, you." Yeah, he never corrected anybody. Nope. They, we all called him Tyrod, and he still doesn't. He says you can say it either way. My mom says Tarad. Yeah. <laughs> but just, my, my last name is actually Bon Voyage, and people don't get it right. I don't know why can't people read. And Stockholm, Sweden, took to the record books over the weekend, doing something a little bit weird. They broke the Guinness World Record for the most people dressed as Spider-Man in one location. <laughs> What's it, four? What, is, what the hell is it? 547. It's not terrible. And now, because in, in, in Stockholm, don't they all sympathize with the other Spider-Man? Isn't that their syndrome? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the Stockholm syndrome? Yeah. When oh, okay. you're abductor or whatever. Yeah, you sympathize with your abductor. Well, they did break the record, and they were all hanging out there for Stockholm Comic-Con. No syndromes, just comics. I didn't know there were enough people in Stockholm. Right? to. Uh, although a bunch of other countries can get there in an hour. Yeah. Right? And especially they got speed trains over there. All right. Well, as we said, the Emmys were last night, hosted by Michael Che and Colin Jost. And in the open, there were some references to the Me Too movement. It is an honor to be here sharing this night with the many, many talented and creative people in Hollywood who haven't been caught yet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this year, the audience is allowed to drink in their seats. Mm-hmm. Hope you're excited about that. Yeah. Because the one thing Hollywood needs right now is people losing their inhibitions at a work function. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. true. They also joked about the Emmys' low ratings. We just want to say a quick hello to the thousands of you here in the audience tonight and to the hundreds watching at home. (laughs) Hi, Silver Lining Senior Center. (laughs) Henry Winkler won his first Emmy last night. And he was adorable doing it. Was he? Yeah. 
43 years in the biz, he finally won. Here's Henry Winkler. If you get a chance to work with Bill Hader or Alec Berg, run, don't walk. Cliff and Aaron and Chris, who represent me for, almost for the first time, I feel represented. I can't stop yet. My wife, Stacy. Oh my God, my cast and crew. And, and the kids, kids, Jed, Zoe, and Max, you can go to bed now. Daddy won! <laughs> Very nice. Uh, how old do you think so his kids are? I can't imagine. That. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you can go to bed now. 38-year-old yeah. Max, Daddy won. <laughs> but Very no, he's funny. great in that show, too. It's uh, Barry is the name of the show on uh, HBO where Bill Hader plays... Uh, a hitman and uh, Henry Winkler is his acting coach because oh, he's funny. a hitman who goes out to LA and is getting into theater and it's, it's a really funny show. I tell you, uh, Henry Winkler is almost oppressively nice though. It like yeah. it gets to you. Like when I, I worked for him on uh, Hollywood Squares was I think the first time and uh, when he sees you and he hired me so he's gonna come up and say ho oh, hi but or ho he might say ho oh. a lot of people say ho oh, when I can work. Um, Grab your hand, then grab like your wrist and forearm, and just tell you what a pleasure it is. And oh. I've kept my eye on you since you were a kid. And I just I want you to know what you're. Doing. And sometimes he's like referring to things I may not have done, and he's just saying nice stuff. <laughs> but what the hell? I'll take it. Beats the uh, alternative. And he's another one who suffers from severe dyslexia. We'll see. <laughs> you wait till my book comes out. If he reads it, he's faking it. <laughs> And last night at the Emmys, a moment a lot of people are talking about, a really, really nice moment. Someone took a knee, but not how you'd think. Jan, you are the sunshine in my life. And Mom was right, don't ever let go of your sunshine. You wonder why I don't like to call you my girlfriend? Because I want to call you my wife. The crowd loved it. He had won an Emmy for producing the Oscars, and she said yes. That's that's what I think of that. Hey, I'm watching a TV show here. Get married somewhere else. Yeah. What is that? There's no entertainment value to it. You long-haired hippie freak. Did you see that guy? Yeah. People loved it. I don't care. I didn't love it. And I didn't even see it. I it saw was it his movie. big moment. I, I his big moment might have been Obama winning the Emmy. Right, and he used it to his advantage to propose to But not girlfriend. to ours. And as a director, you would think he <laughs> knows don't do crappy television. Yeah. HBO and Netflix both home took home 23 awards, tying for the most number of Emmys. Won Game of Thrones, Best Outstanding Drama, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel won five awards, including Best Comedy. It was nice to see for Game of Thrones that the little dude won for being dead the whole season. So. I will punch you. Remember I told you about those guys that do comedy by misleading you? He's their, their <laughs> king. <laughs> but you're a good king. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Adam Driver will be hosting the upcoming Saturday Night Live season 44 premiere. Uh, the Star Wars and Black Klansman actor will be joined by musical guest Kanye West. Wow. This will be Adam Driver's second time hosting. This will be Kanye's seventh appearance since 2005. Hmm. Remember with Mike Myers, they're doing some uh, uh, charity work and he, they're standing right next to each other. And Mike Myers. It says, you know, all the money tonight is going to go to this wonderful cause. Kanye, I know he's supposed to talk about the cause. And he goes, President Bush doesn't like black people. <laughs> and Mike Myers just goes, ah! <laughs> Now that's good television. That, that, was, that is exactly what that was. Let's take a look at sports. Sports. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Yeah. That's 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Monday Night Football for the Seahawks last night. A tough one on the road, and the Bears roughed up Russell Wilson. <sighs> Five different Bears defenders sacked Russell Wilson in the opening 30 minutes of the game. Khalil Mack, of course, looked great, as was expected. No one can understand why he got traded. The Seahawks did lose 24-17. Oh. They'll turn it around Sunday, my friends. Yeah, they will. The Cowboys come into town. Kickoff is 125. Uh, Will Disley looked good. He caught uh, several passes. He looked good out there, the rookie, but uh, there weren't a lot of high points. Uh, who's the guy that's going to jail? Because he looked pretty good, too. I hope we get to keep him for another game or two. Yeah. Michael. Yeah, I don't know. Not Michael Kendricks. Jackson. Michael Thank Kendricks. You. But he looked good, too. But uh, unfortunately, we don't know how long we're going to get to keep him on the team. January is when he's, he's sentenced in January. Maybe. He will we'll go see. to jail. He will. That's what experts believe. He'll oh, go to jail. Wow. He pled guilty. I plead guilty to everything, and I never went to jail over it. <laughs> well. No, you get arrested, then you bail out, then you go in front of a judge, and you go, I am guilty, I am really sorry, and they go, hey, Mr. Bonnie, 
you're not going to jail every single time. Well, hopefully and, he and won't thank go to jail either. That's what I'm saying. My money's on he doesn't go. The Cleveland Browns signed a rookie kicker named Greg Joseph yesterday to replace Zane Gonzalez, who almost won a game for the Cleveland Browns four times but missed every single kick. <laughs> The Minnesota Vikings cut ties with their kicker, Daniel Carlson, one day after he went 0 for 3 on field goals against Green Bay and almost won the game but missed all his kicks. Rough year for kickers yeah. already. Uh, well, rough year for people that suck at being kickers. <laughs> well, I, mean, I would imagine they were good enough They were good enough to get the job. Exactly. You know, at some point they could kick. I have heard you specifically say about, oh, I forget who it was, but... Why'd they sign Matt even but yes, why'd they sign him? That guy sucks. People who suck get signed. Yeah. Yeah, but Janet Look at our contract. missed two last week. He should not have missed any. He is Mr. Reliable. I mean he was. Yeah, you would think after yeah. twenty seven years in the league. Yeah. He, he could you like make good last night? On to the Mariners. Rookie good. pinch hitter Daniel Vogelback hit his first career grand slam, lifting the Mariners over the Astros four to one. Up next, the Astros again with a 5-10 start time on Root Sports. Mike Leak and Josh James will be pitching. Big news for the Seattle Mariners. Yesterday, the King County Council voted 5-4 to four to direct $135 million in hotel tax revenue to maintain Safeco Field as part of the Mariners' new lease agreement. Yeah, but isn't that down from $180 million? It's better than nothing, right, which but, is what a lot of people have called for. Yeah, oh, a lot of people. I heard him. I heard him making reasonable arguments. I disagree vehemently. I say give him the money. I'd have given the whole 180. Well, it was 180 that they wanted of public funding. Now, Paul, you kind of put it in an interesting way. Yeah, Paul. Oh, like if you're if you're renting a building for another business, like let's say you run a bar and uh, you know the the lights are aren't working the electricity's not working yeah. it's the landlord's responsibility to fix that no matter how much money you make at your bar right you know so the the argument against it was oh the mariners make all this money why should we fix the venue because you own the venue you own the venue it's yeah. your job to That's fix the problem very nicely done man maybe yeah. not build you know brand new luxury suites but fix you know fix the maintenance issues well a lot of us i should say that a lot of you might see a plate of food seemingly untouched and abandoned. It smells good and you want to eat it. Yeah, yeah so we do. A lot of you do, oh. including Joey Gallo, Major League Baseball player. Is that who Joey Gallo is? That's a famous name, Joey Gallo. Well, is, he, that a mo- is that a mafia name? Was that in, in The Godfather? Because there's no reason I should know Joey Gallo's <laughs> name. I, yeah, I, don't know. I think that was Goodfellas. Was it Goodfellas? Is Joey Gallo? I knew it. Thank you. I only know him from playing for the Rangers. He's a great baseball player, but he's in the outfield. And he is spotted on camera going over, sticking his hand over the little fence there, grabbing a handful of popcorn and walk away, eating it in the outfield as he waits for the next batter (laughs) to get up to plate. Where was the popcorn? It was in the stands, but in a lot of the seats you can... Talk, touch people, you can talk to people, you can eat their food. So he's eating some guy's popcorn? Yes. Kind of cool. I like it. I'd do it. Would you eat Paul's popcorn? Mm. You're at the movies. That's what you do. You <laughs> share a popcorn. I, I don't see the big deal. As a matter of fact, I think it's over. It's kind of neat and friendly and fan favorite, if you will. Yeah. I've I, seen this before with baseball players yeah. where they, like, grab a, a, a foul ball that was popped up yep. and they reach over and snag somebody's nacho. My favorite was Prince Fielder who did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He caught the, po- the pop-up foul. And then went over, got the nacho. Just took a single dipped chip, it dipped it. In the cheese. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Ate it and walked away. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, in Sounders action tomorrow, Philadelphia Union, 8 p.m. match time. And Connor McGregor back in the news. Yeah. But not for fighting. You might want to fight after having some of what he's offering. Proper number 12 Irish whiskey. He has a new brand of whiskey. Now, he wanted to name it Notorious, which is his nickname. Yeah, Taken. Someone already has that. Yeah, B-I-G. So he said, I come from a place called Crumlin in Dublin 12, a place near and dear to my heart. So that's the name of it. It's a proper Irish whiskey, and it'll help pad his earnings. Uh, Let's see. He is the fourth richest athlete in the world. From one fight with Mayweather. $99 million. Yeah, all his other fights maybe made him ten million, if that. I doubt it. And he's got ninety nine million. That's all from fighting Mayweather. Well, he is set to make his return October sixth against Khabib Nurmagomedov. Oh, I love that guy. Plant. <laughs>
Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Tomorrow, I love Wednesdays because Paul's kid Jellybean joins the show. 750 Jellybean's Joke of the Week. And another pair of tickets to Vets Aid 2018 with Joe Walsh, Don Henley, James Taylor. That happens at 720. Cool. You know what happens a while? I don't know. In just a couple of minutes. What? One of the greatest broadcasters in the history of broadcasting comes in here. Really? Yeah. Any second now. Uh, it would be my friend Steve Slayton. He's going to walk and he's going to play a bunch of classic rock and roll for your listening pleasure because that's what he does. Oh, Edward R. Murrow. That's who I was going to compare him to and I forgot. Yeah. Anyway, Steve Slayton's going to come in here. So let's get the hell out of his way. Bye.